This is William Howard's Abbey Studios. Just a quick disclaimer uh, before we start the episode. This episode was uh, originally intended as the Brawl 2023 special. And obviously we are way beyond that point now when it's approaching to the Brawl 2024 special. But regardless of that, um, this episode is really great. Uh, Toad and Corbanzo were really great guests. And yeah, I hope you enjoy listening to the episode. Hello everybody. Welcome to the World of Brickfuls podcast. I am your host, William of AW Studios. Joining with us as always is my good friend and co-host, Sean Willis of City Panther. Hello again. And our special guests today are the winners of Brawl 2023, Corbanzo Films and Toad Productions. Uh, yeah, welcome and congratulations for uh, coming first place. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Yep. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... Um, it was, uh, I was so glad to see, um, you know, Live Rich, Die Rich, uh, uh mm-hmm. come in first place. I think, um, with, with the amount of like entries coming in and like the ones that were in, especially like the top five, it was really hard to know, uh, who would place. And I was, I was really glad to see, uh, this one win because it was a personal favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, Same here, yeah. yeah. I can say that, uh, I think we can both say that as, as, you know, non judges. So there's oh, no yeah. bias or we're not revealing too much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and of course, um, it's a you're another example of brick filmers who have placed previously in other in other contests and in, like previous brawls and thacks, and then like it's quite steadily headed over to yeah top place, which uh, it's happened a couple of times now, and it's really nice to see. Yeah, yeah it's it's ref- I don't know. I just I really like seeing uh, like with other other uh, brick filmers as well, just. You can see their first kind of like breakthrough into the like the top fifteen or something, and you can kind of just see in different contests their entries just going up and then eventually <laughs> just winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully it's a nice sort of incentive for people to stick with it, to stick with brick filming over a couple of years, and and stick with making these sort of like original story brick films. Oh, yeah, totally. And I think Brawl and Thack they're like great like motivators to like actually make a brick film and like finish it all the way yeah <laughs> there's so many projects that like you start and then it's like a week later school happens mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. pretty soon you're uh, not making the film anymore yeah. i know for me yeah brawl is pretty much like the annual excuse to actually get a film made yeah 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 definitely. but it's fun mm-hmm. i think it, it's a nice to have a kind of annual reminder uh that you can actually achieve a lot in a short period of time because that's true. Yeah. Definitely, as you're saying, saying then it's like why right now I've I've it, within a week um, the my process my progress on uh, a bit of animation I'm I'm wanting to do is I've I've built a house um, and I've built like part of a pavement um, and that's like literally it um, and then <laughs> you see the stuff that you do on a, in brawl when you when you. <laughs> You tell yourself you have to do it in a week, and yeah, you make an entire film. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So especially with Thack, like it's like I sometimes before the contest I just think in twenty four hours from now I'll have a film. Hopefully, <laughs> if everything goes to plan. <laughs> and that's yeah, same thing with Brawl. It's just like it's weird to think like in a week we'll have a film like done. I'm not really sure where it's gonna go, how it's gonna be, but. It's just cool to think about yeah. that. And I think it's true, yeah. You, you can... It's nice to have the reminder from time to time. Like, I know with me, I've been thinking for a while, I, I doubt I could do tech again. But with this brawl, uh, I did a lot of it in 24 hours, and especially, like, really, really, really crunching at the end. And it sort of reminded me, like, oh, that's how you do it for tech. Like, maybe I could do tech again if if I just crunch like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like what what you were doing like me me and corbin for our film we just we had a really good schedule like i'm not gonna lie like this this is the first film we ever used a script and like i feel like oh, we've yeah. never actually took the time to plan out what we're gonna do throughout the week you know before and yeah. also this is the first time we've done a brawl together but before i would just like <laughs> right when the contest started i just start like coming up with ideas and then start filming like pretty much right after that but this time like i don't think we started filming until monday yeah we didn't i literally spent the whole first day writing the script and i think i reworked it like three times so to cut the time back and we got 
it was a really great way to structure the film so we knew exactly what we were doing yeah especially especially since we were filming outside you know we had limited hours mm. like daylight so i think it's a good thing to actually spend time to really perfect like know exactly what you're going to be doing beforehand <laughs> that's something that i've never really done before yeah i'm kind of bad for that yeah, I wanted to actually briefly uh, touch on the fact that, yeah, so you've actually been doing uh, a couple of uh, projects together. Um, I think, I think you're, am I correct that the, the first project you did together was Forget Me Not? Is that right? Or? Um, yes. That was, that was the third project, I think. The first one was a long time ago, back in 2020. It was a school project, and we made this little zombie film. Oh, right, yeah. That was a long time ago. But then, the next year we made a scary video again again for Halloween. And then Forget Me Not was like, the same, like, uh, the same Halloween kind of video that we do yearly. But that's kind of when we started really working together, is yeah. Forget Me Not. We really started, like, doing this whole thing together. Like, we both have our own parts. Yeah. Nice. And so, have you known each other longer than you've been brick filming? Um. Yes. Um. We met. I think we met in 2020, like fall. And then the first brick film I can recall I made was like in 2013 and 2014. It was just random videos, you know, like nothing, no yeah. real film. And then yeah, I made like, like brick films with like the Halo Mega Block people, and they're really chompy and. <laughs> disgusting because i just like hold the camera instead of actually setting it up for awful films but it's always fun fun thing to do as a kid I'm glad i was always making movies as a kid mm -hmm. nice so. nice so you, you actually both were sort of making brick films when when you met or when, when you met did you kind of get back into doing brick filming did it kind of like you know make you want to start again or um for me it was like 2020 was kind of when I started my YouTube channel, Brick Film Co-Productions. And so I was already kind of making stuff. And then Corbin came and we, we kind of just, he was in my neighborhood, so we kind of just knew each other. And then, somehow, I don't know how I found out he also did stop motion. But for some reason, I think he came over to my house. We were going to play uh, instruments together and then... Somehow he found out he all uh, brick film. Yeah, and Shell showed me some of his um, old films. I was like, oh, these are way better than mine. I should actually try <laughs> making something again. I think actually like meeting Toad, if you want to call him that, uh, <laughs> actually definitely got me into the brick film, brick filming a lot more than I used to because I used to make them just like for fun, just a stupid little video, you know. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's actually really interesting um, that you actually sort of, by coincidence, were like, oh yeah, we, we both did, we both made yeah, uh, like videos. He was, when he moved in, like, I think I found out he played guitar, and I played, I played drums, and so it's like, oh, you should come over and we should jam. And then he came over and he saw, he saw my Lego, and he was like, oh, you like Lego? Like, yeah, I make videos with him. Oh, like, me too, yeah. That's how it kind of happened. Pretty cool. Of course, the interesting in the brawl entry is the, the musical element as well. That's probably my favorite part. Oh, yeah, the music. Yeah, yeah, the music was definitely, like, probably, I would say, the biggest inspiration for the film. Like, uh, like lately I've been, like, learning jazz on guitar, and then I've been listening to a lot of old jazz songs, and just that that like whole vibe with the cowboys i don't know it just has a nice i don't know it's it's nice with the western setting for sure we just we even though jazz wasn't really a thing in like i guess you can say cowboys were i'm assuming most prominent in like the 1800s yeah like early like 1900s but like jazz wasn't even really a thing back then but we were like i mean what it's just such a good genre of music that we can just i'm just gonna use we're just gonna use it on this anyways even though it's the wrong time period <laughs> yeah and if you've heard of the uh anime cowboy bebop you probably know what i mean it's like all jazz oriented and that mm -hmm. was definitely an inspiration for the film as well 
we were actually contemplating on whether we wanted to make it like a typical Western film or like more of like a futuristic Star Wars almost esque music, like a Western film. So, yeah, I think that the music certainly stood out to a lot of people, uh, and but also just like bringing together the music and yeah, like the other film or anime influences. Yeah, it felt like the the film had a lot going into it and it, it felt like something special thank you yeah definitely and it's it's funny that you you know sort of mentioned that about the different kind of i guess styles of having like a jazz um music with a, in a western setting um and it's funny because yeah it, it is two things which um don't sort of traditionally go together but it's not something i even really considered um watching the film it feels like it was so it had such a, uh, it, I guess in a way, I guess your film, uh, I guess films in general feel sort of stylistically so confident in what they are that it all just seems to come together. And yeah, it, it didn't even kind of cross my mind that it was like two things, which I guess are sort of an anachronistic, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I uh, originally we listened, I was listening to this rapper called MF Doom and he has a lot of like weird like wacky like you know raps whatever and uh he always talks about like cartoon villains and stuff like that like his name is inspired by dr doom from marvel right and we listen to his stuff and his the way he samples his music is like a lot of jazz oriented stuff so that was definitely another segue and we just thought it would go perfect with like we have two uh outlaws and they're both villains and that was definitely an inspirer for the film as well, and the jazz soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> lots of different music influences. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of the stuff. The sort of stuff that we like to hear. All the um, outside influences. You know, it's not not just based on on the other brick films. <laughs> yeah, that's really fun to do. Music. Yeah, I, one of the things that um, I had noticed. Watching other films as well, um, like you know, I, I just watched uh, Forget Me Not um, before joining the stream. Was um, it, it, they, I feel like you have a very um, kind of unique style, um, mm -hmm. that, and it, it feels like you can clearly tell that there's a lot of influences there that are not, um, you know, just just other brick films. Um, and I, I really like um, that you've, you've managed to find that style. Um, yeah. Something I I I, uh, I particularly like is uh, that I see in, you know a lot of your films is the way that you um, you cut to you know shots of like your hands and you know you're doing things like the close ups um, and uh, there's a really cool a really good shot in I think Forget Me Not when the, the the record's playing and you zoom in and it sort of you know it kind of cuts to this yeah shot with the an actual record and the hands and yeah it's just uh, I really love that kind of thing. Me too. Yeah, that's, you know, it all kind of started with me just being too lazy because, like, I have really big hands and it's really hard to film the little stuff, like the little hands close up. And so that's one thing I I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can just cheat and use, like, real hands. And I realized, mm -hmm. like, if you, like, it's just one thing to use real like at live action. It's just pretty cool. It's like a different flavor, I guess. But then I realized combining that with like a cool transition into it that like that makes it feel that doesn't like that almost keeps the same vibe, even though it's a completely different like real life in Lego. But it like almost blends them together. If I can just get a decent enough transition, that's one of my favorite things to do. Is and now I'll be like, it'll be an easy to do shot with Lego, but then I'll purposely just do it with in real life because I'm like, how I'd rather see this than a Lego, you know? I just <laughs> like to film what I would really want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool that you have your own style and like, you're not not just following trends or you know, uh, making you know some tired meme in lego <laughs> it's nice to see you know s s some people are still keeping alive like making actual films and and like but they yeah, like they feel like good brick films but also you know they have their own artistic 
quality to them. Like, yeah, as I was saying, not not just copying existing brick films, but at the same time also working well as Lego films. Yeah, that's what I like to do. And like one thing I always try to do before going into these contests is I always just think to myself, I'm like, okay, so I don't know what this story is going to be. I don't know what like really what's going to happen, but I do know I want to try this in this film. Like, like for this film, for Brawl, I was like, I've never, or I've tried making a film outside before, but I've never released that. It didn't go very well. But <laughs> this time I was like, I want to try to blend like the outdoors with Lego. I don't think, I haven't really seen that a lot. The The closest I've really seen, maybe I just haven't seen a lot of brick films, but is I think it's Down the Hatch or Through oh, yeah. the Hatch, mm -hmm. that series. Just like, there's this one clip like deleted scene I think where it's like a beach chase and that heavily inspired the train part in our film like that whole part just like something about filming outside is just gives a different vibe and I just I love it I I like the I like the look of it again if you can pull it off it's it makes it so worth it because you have a natural uh backdrop and it looks really really nice mm-hmm yeah, yeah, down the hatch is incredible, and and I, I know the deleted scene you're talking about is definitely one of my favorite <laughs> bits yeah. of footage that he released from that. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it does. It does kind of make me feel sad that there isn't a an actual finished film uh, to go with it. Because yeah, the the stuff that mm -hmm. that the, he released um, for yeah, all the deleted scenes were really amazing. But um, yeah, it it's, it comes as no. Uh, it it really uh, now you mention um, you know through the hatch. Um, uh, I'm not at all surprised that you'd be inspired by them, um, especially based on the uh, yeah, your bow entry. Um, did, yeah, the, the train sequence um, was just so well done. And um, were you kind of worried about um, the amount of time you had, really, I guess, and, you know, I guess having to deal with that, the natural elements of being outside and the lighting changing and that kind of stuff? Every single night, I was like every day of brawl, I was worrying about that because, especially since it was, so, we started animating on Monday and it was supposed to rain. I think on Wednesday, and I was like, okay, we got two days to do <laughs> like the the biggest chunks, and so kind of what we did was we had this <laughs> actually like it just kind of came. We didn't really plan out the schedule, but it was really good. Like. We'd go, we slept outside in some hammocks, and that actually helped us out because it helped us wake up right at the dawn, right at dawn, you know, right uh, when the sun comes up. And so we wake up, it's like 7 o'clock, go eat breakfast, then come right out, like 30 minutes later, already animating out in the field, and like have lunch break. It was very tight, like we, I only gave us like 30 minutes to have like a break, and then we'd get back to it. And then we'd be done with like two scenes or so, two or three scenes by like six o'clock. Then we would just head inside into the basement and film all like the parts we could film inside. And that mm -hmm. was kind of how it went. At least for, not on Monday. Monday was a different story, but. Monday was probably the worst day. It was because we were out in his, uh, on one of his farms and uh, it's super dusty and it's hot goats. there. Goats everywhere. There's no shade whatsoever. And we didn't have like a generator or anything, so the computer kept overheating and then like dying. So we'd have to like take breaks and like let it charge for a little bit and then come back out and film. But that was definitely the worst day. Yeah, and our allergies really going crazy. So dusty. But yeah, I think that the effort you put into it, it paid off because it, it probably lent itself to the like the spontaneous feeling throughout the film yeah just just the whole thing it just feels like it has the, a certain spirit about it uh, which i it's hard to explain yeah i see what you mean it was it was definitely really fun i think that was probably the most fun i've ever had making a brick film because it was just I was trying all these different things we were trying all these different things we've never tried before you know and it was just a it was a different experience um I definitely think it was worth it in the end. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I found it, it was pretty charming. It also uh, lent itself to the spontaneity of it. Like, 
there's a lot of shots where the mod elements just sh- like shows up halfway through the shot. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you can feel like you're working so fast that you just, you know, didn't even think about it until you're already halfway in. Yeah, that mod element is was the death of us. We actually <laughs> had the last day is... we were filming. I like went through all the fil- footage like frame by frame and realized we had 30 seconds without the mod element. So we had to go back and reshoot quite a few shots to get that. Uh, that was right before we were gonna uh, submit it to Chris. We were like about, we were like just watching through it, just to like, can, we were like, ah, we finally finished, let's just watch through it one last time. And then we were like, wait. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> yeah, but there's a whole like 33 seconds that didn't have the mod. And we were devastated because we worked <laughs> so hard, you know? And uh, so we had to go back and like reshoot stuff. And most of them, it wasn't too bad because they were like still shots. So we mm-hmm. we could uh... probably shouldn't say this, but I feel like we wouldn't notice in an eight and a half minute film if it was 30 seconds missing instead of 15 seconds missing. <laughs> That's a good point. That's what I was trying to think. I was like, will they notice? I mean, uh, but I was like, no. I, I was like, we're, we're not it. risking it. <laughs> yeah, like, we made this behemoth of a film we're not we're not gonna yeah. get disqualified over the stupid mod element you know yeah i i definitely can uh understand yeah your that's, reasoning that's a good that, idea <laughs> like i definitely that's what people should do yeah yeah like I, I definitely would not um you know take the risk um i'm not just saying that as like the host of of Zach, but uh <laughs> I, I mean that is as definitely as if i was in that situation i'd definitely be like yeah I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna I'm gonna just reshoot it <laughs> because you don't want to get yeah all that all that work and then get to like oh you're <laughs> 33 seconds. I've got no mods. That's it. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was the like the worst moment of realization. We were like we were like actually like super sad. Like I was like, <laughs> like oh, man, we were not ready to just end it all. Just delete the the project. We were like we'll just post this not in brawl, and then we we're like. We can do it. We have, what, an hour? We can redo this real quick. Yeah, I was in a similar spot. Like, I was thinking to myself, I've got way too much left to shoot. I'm not going to get this done, so I might just have to release this as, you know, a late brawl film. But then I was like, nah, I have to just push through. And even if some of the shots are kind of crap, like, I want it to be in brawl. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't really notice, like, again, like you guys said for us, like, I didn't really notice any like different like i don't even know like sometimes i feel like the different the perspective of the animator and the watch is different yeah it's very different yeah like i can't notice that you had to rush through any shots like i think it all looked pretty good <laughs> it's like people probably didn't even notice that the shots were different because they didn't even see the first shot in the first place but like you know it's yeah. It's just funny to think, like, no one's ever going to know this really happened until now, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I, think... I know when I'm watching the film, I'm thinking to myself, oh, the lighting isn't as good in these shots. That's how I know they were rushed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you're always going to have that pers- um, perspective as well. I think of when you're first coming up with the script or whatever your process is in the pre-production side of things, I think you're always going to have a a set up and a an idea in mind that's actually more complicated than the actual end result um this is something that i felt with um when i was doing my film there was this sort of i had this plan in mind where um because yeah my entry is the robot revamp the robots going going around in the factory and stuff and i love that one that's awesome oh thank you thank you so much yeah um yeah so i, I had this idea in mind where uh, basically, the very beginning, when you have the robot um, carrying the um, sort of like crate of of like bricks with a different, like there's like a darker shade and a, a lighter shade of grey. The original plan was it was gonna he was just gonna dump all of it at once onto the conveyor belt, and then there was gonna be this split where you know it was gonna kind of go like on one side it was gonna go to the dark shade area, and then it was gonna go to the light shade area. And I was just thinking this is gonna be a really complicated thing to shoot, and I just thought. Oh wait! As I was about to film it, why don't I just have two robots? One's carrying the dark shade, and one's carrying the light shade. And then you just see one shade of of bricks going down the conveyor belt, and then you kind of 
can fill the blanks for the rest of it. And I was like, oh yeah, that's so much more sim- simple than what I initially planned, which is going to be this like overly elaborate thing. But obviously I got that. I always have that in mind now. I'm, I'm thinking of that and thinking like, oh yeah, the, the idea was like way more elaborate <laughs> when I, when I <laughs> came up with it. But then yeah, the end result actually works, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah There's definitely a bunch of those moments in our film. Like, we like would be shooting and like, oh, we have this freaking awful part to shoot, and then it's like, oh wait, we can just do this inside, and it'll be, it won't be that bad. Yeah, yeah. Like the inside of the train car, like we were gonna plan on filming that outside, but then we realized, like, wait, why are we doing this? We could just film this tonight or something. Like, why are we trying to film this outside? Cause like, I'm not gonna show the windows out. That's all I'm gonna do. So I was like, we have to, there's windows in there. We got to show the windows. Then I realized like, nah, I'll just, I'll film this inside. This is too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it, we all f- I find that or like, it's more important to just get the idea across. And sometimes like the continuity or the, even the, the quality is actually not all that important at all. <laughs> I know for me, it was the, um, in my film, there's a shot where there's a character in the ground, like the the door is flat on the ground and then the character is like embedded into the ground so that he can be knocking at the door. And like that was one of the, the last things I had to do. I had no time and it's just the like a super rickety setup that was practically falling over as I was shooting on it. And, uh, you know, all I did was shoot a handful of frames, play them forward and then just play them in reverse to end the shot. But like, I was surprised because people kept mentioning it. They were saying like, oh, the guy in the ground at the door, that, that, that was that was funny. That was so good. And I was thinking to myself, no, that, that, that part was terrible. It, it looks so bad. <laughs> it's so rushed. But, but it seems like people barely even noticed. That's funny. Yeah, I, that I did not notice that at all. <laughs> yeah, so it was more important to just get the visual across, just get it in the film at, at any cost rather than, you know, I, I, I was very, very close to just putting up a... a MS Paint storyboard, or just saying like scene missing, ran out of time. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's like when it was. I think it was like Wednesday. Corbin was at work, so I was by myself. It was like the last scene I was filming for the day, and the, there was a heavy wind. Like, or it wasn't heavy, but there was like wind, you know, coming up up, up the hill, and like I was trying to. I was simply just trying to film this guy turn around. And like get a cool shot of the sky, you know, the clouds. But my set, everything blew away off the table. Like everything spilled. And I was just about to be like, oh my gosh, I'm done with this. <laughs> it was a, definitely a. That was a definitely shot. a downside to using cardboard buildings. Is that they <laughs> blew away in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> cardboard buildings outdoors. <laughs> yeah. And like the base plates and just. That was one of the worst things about our setup was just, it was so janky, like, literally, and it was hot outside, like, it was pretty hot, and, like, the table was white, because it was just one of those lifetime tables, so it was, like, burning my face, like, the sun would hit it and then reflect onto my face, I could barely see the screen, so I was, like, (laughs) animating pretty much, like, really blindly when we were filming, because I could, I'd have to, like, get up right up close to the screen, but yeah, that was, those were the worst parts of filming it, it's just... That is outside. <laughs> yeah, the cardboard buildings are really interesting and distinctive as well. I was I was thinking then actually about the yeah make but when it comes to you know getting getting towards the end of the the deadline and uh, getting to that point where you feel like you want to almost give up um, and, and actually yeah. have to kind of make compromises I guess with like animation and that kind of stuff. I think a, a prime example of, of that happening and it working was. Um, you know, Joko's stack entry um, for this year, the Which Am I? Where you have, like, uh, you know, because it's such an elaborate film, there's so much um, to it, it's so complicated and, you know, like, uh, just crazy just how much was achieved in, in 24 hours. And then you have, like, the part where he's, like, recalling kind of, like, halfway towards the, the film and it ends up just being, like, these sort of, like, still frames. But... <laughs> It just doesn't matter. Like, it's just like, you just, it, it didn't feel like it was incomplete, um, even though clearly that was done, you know, for time. <laughs> yeah. And he still ends up in second place. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good film. Like, 
Dude. Oh my gosh. I would die if, like, our Thack film was, like, so delayed and so... I can't mm. even imagine, like, filming something like that. And our film wasn't even that, like, crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just cool to see. It's probably another good example of where, like, with, with Joko's Thack entry, yeah, as, as you, you mentioned, like, it came second place, like, it's always better to find a way to get it into the contest because even if you might be unhappy with your film and you might think it's unfinished and you might be tempted to just give up and do it as a late film later but like if you find a way and enter it yeah you could still end up being second or in my case still top five like and I think that's in the long run that's a lot nicer than than delaying it and you know spending another week or two and just polishing things that at the end of the day nobody really cares that much about <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a really good like um you know reminder of of how much uh sometimes being a perfectionist you know it goes too far and i think mm-hmm. that when when you don't have that that deadline and you don't have to finish it that week you sometimes are working on a project for a really long time and you keep pushing it back because you keep thinking, oh, this isn't quite perfect. This isn't quite mm-hmm. what it needs yeah. to be. Um, and I think when you do brawl and you have to kind of shut that, shut that kind of part of like part of your brain that's telling you that like off and just keep making something. Um, and then you still end up doing really well. Um, I think it's a kind of reminder of like the, what actually the priorities are, what actually does matter, and what yeah, like, uh, audience is actually going to pick up. You know, <laughs> in my role film, um, you know, when I was getting near the the deadline, uh, and I was trying to think, like, I was thinking that I didn't have enough time to film everything that I still had planned, so I had to cut something. And what I cut was uh, at the end of the film. There's the part where the guy gets locked out of his house, and he like he's supposed to be running over to the look in the window and like through the window he's he's seeing the other guy stealing all the stuff uh, originally i was going to shoot a shot from the inside where like you can see him looking through the window and in the foreground is the thief like going back and forth taking all of his items and and you can see him out the window while he's saying like oh woe is me all my all my possessions <laughs> etc and i just realized like i don't have time to shoot that so I, I can just get away with he runs off screen and then you hear him speaking while it's just holding on the the still of the door because you know th- this would have been a really really long shot to have to animate because it was supposed to play out during the super long fade <laughs> but then I was like oh I'll just do a super long fade on just a still frame instead and like you know I, I don't think it took away from the film like it's, all the ideas I had in mind are still in there yeah, definitely. That's the again another example of of something where like it just I can now you say it I can I can kind of see how oh yeah that was done for time but like it it, it just works like yeah <laughs> it's yeah it still works like it wouldn't have been that much better with this extra shot so yeah I think yeah it's nice in these contests to be reminded of like how to find ways to economize and still get things done. Yeah, for sure. Uh, speaking of which, though, like, how did you get a eight and a half minute film made for Brawl? Well, like I said, it was the schedule we had. And like, I think, I don't know if you guys saw our uh, Robin Hood video, but that yeah. was kind of like, I don't know, Corbin writes a lot of stuff and it's really good. Um, But I think for, at least for Robin Hood, there's some things we could have uh, taken out of the script, but for this one, we, or I guess you can say it, like, yeah, I think for the biggest part, the biggest contributor to just to us getting a film done was the script for sure, because it keeps you on track. And with the Robin Hood film, I wrote a script for that as well. But you know, in that film, we decided, oh, we're gonna have the king fly across the world for like. And that's going to cost us another five hours. But for this, we stuck right to the script. And that's why I reworked it so many times was because it was too long. And it's really finding those, like, the most important parts of the story that you want to convey. And that was uh, definitely the biggest thing. Plus, our deadline was actually the Friday because I was leaving. So we had to get it done that Friday. So we were animating Monday 
to Friday, and uh, it was definitely the script. I mm. I think that was the biggest contributor. Plus, just animating during the day, like doing it outside, really kept us on track. Like we can't mm-hmm. we can't afford to do like extra improvised stuff on the fly, like we did in Robin Hood, because we only have uh, that like yeah. 12 hour span of time where there's light outside. That's a good point, yeah. That you actually you have a deadline each day because the light's gonna go, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was probably the biggest time when I worried about lighting and all that was uh, the first day, Monday, when we filmed the train part. That was, that was actually really stressful because, you know, our computer was dying every 15 minutes. We're getting nothing <laughs> done. <laughs> and I was, but then but then we got a generator for the next day and the next day was like heaven compared to monday i was amazing i was probably the best day and it was just like i don't know it just it felt like it went by so fast but yeah it was we we just i guess we just it's all in the structure the, the reproduction i don't think i've ever put in we've ever put in that much effort into pre-production before collectively like Pre-production, I've always undermined, like, as just like a, eh, I don't care, I'll just wing it, you know? But for this especially, like, if I just winged it, like I always did, I also I always used to do, it definitely would have gone to the rocks. It <laughs> wouldn't have worked at all. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I, I, one thing about uh, the pre-production stuff is um, you don't realize just how much how important it is until you really put work into it you know for a film um and i definitely think it's one of those things where there's no going back <laughs> when you realize what you can do with uh, pre-production it's like you kind of realize that oh wait like i i can't do this without without the planning anymore <laughs> so. yeah and that's another thing with the script is like we were able to like look at the script and be like what do we need for this scene and we were able to like plan all that out before we even animated it so that we weren't like running for pieces or running for like characters and stuff like that we all had we just had our you know script that we could go off of so uh, how long did it take to write the script like at, at what point was the script finished uh so i wrote i wrote the whole thing out like with all of the ideas that we planned out because the first day was like storyboarding pretty much like we got all our ideas um like on a paper and then sunday i woke up and i uh wrote out the whole thing with all of the ideas and then i kind of went back through and picked out the most important things and then rewrote it and so that was short enough and then i record all the lines just like a rough draft of all the lines to see, like, get it, kind of get a gauge on how long all these lines were going to be. And we were trying to shoot for, like, I think, like, five minutes at, of lines at most. I think it ended up being, like, six. But we decided to roll with it. But that took, the script writing probably took, like, uh... The Sunday? It took, like, all of Sunday to write the film, but it was definitely worth it. I mean, to me, that still sounds like, wow, you know, you got a lot done quickly. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, like, I, I rarely ever, like, get anything done before, like, the morning of Tuesday, probably. Um, usually, uh, I take all of Sunday to actually come up with an idea. And then Monday is the pre-production process. And then and then mm-hmm. Tuesday is, uh, oh, I'm the first shot. <laughs> so, yeah, mm-hmm. that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know for me, like, I had a few gags in mind and, uh, and like, uh, half of an idea, sort of. But, like, it was definitely sort of like, okay, I'll just start filming stuff. And hopefully by the time I've filmed all that I can film currently, I'll I'll have come up with some way to, like, conclude this or, like, tie these gags together. <laughs> you know, come up with some semblance of a, a story. <laughs> That's... Well, I think one, another factor as to why, how we got this long film and all these things done quickly is because, I mean, there's two of us, you know, Mm -hmm. and that almost doubles the workforce. Like, 
I guess I think I was saying earlier, like, we both kind of have our own roles in the project, you know? Like, Corbin, he's in charge of all the writing, the scripting, the uh, editing. And then all, my job is just to do cinematography, the filming, set design. Like, we both have our different jobs. And then we both kind of, like, we both kind of share ideas on the story. Like, I kind of just look over and, like, hey, we can tweak this kinda, to kind of make it a little less heavy on the animation side of things <laughs> yeah but that's kind of i think that's another thing like that's why i don't know if i can go back to making a film by myself because like <laughs> it's like i feel it feels so much more freeing especially in the competitions because it's like i don't have to worry about editing um as much as i used to mm -hmm. it's like i used to be like okay i'll set aside this much time for editing and all this now it's like i guess i'm just spoiled now because I got, I got someone to do that for me. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I feel like it's just a lot easier for both of us now that we don't have to worry about these different things. Like I can, I can just focus on bringing out my best performance in animation and set, you know. And he can do his best in writing and editing and just directing, I guess. Plus, like the stuff that's fun for us is the stuff that we. Like are doing so like i kind of dread the animation part i just love the, like the story aspect and the like putting it together and i'm kind of like the big picture guy i guess and then uh toad is like the um more intricate detail kind of thing because uh he's doing the animation and i'll like kind of uh give my input like i think we should do like a wide shot for this or yeah. it's got to be close up here like we kind of just both share our vision, vision as we're animating, and that's another thing that's so like awesome about working, like as a duo, is you can you have like someone there to like actually, you know, hang out with while you're uh, yeah, yeah. dreadfully like animating some of these like really long sequences. <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course, you can get feedback instantly. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, like the how much of what you're describing feels like. An actual like live action film set, um, especially with the you know working on location and having to look, think about. I mean, we were talking about previously. I think having to think about the the weather, looking at the forecast, trying to get it done when it's you know when it's still daylight, mm -hmm. um, and also this that yeah that that sort of thing of just like being uh, there on the set and being like discussing the actual you know, next shot, what you're gonna do and stuff it, it, in a way that I can I can almost picture like a a director and a cinematographer, you know, talking it, talking about it, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. That's exactly what it feels like. Like, I don't know. I feel like I take more of the direction role, like, because I'm, you know, in charge of the story and stuff like that. And it feels like we're actually making, like, real movies. Just stop motion is, like, the medium that we're mm -hmm. doing those movies in. And it's really mm -hmm. fun to do it, like, collaborating with other people. Yeah. Yeah, that and especially like like Corbin said, like to be able to do it with someone else, like especially for Thack, like I I I film my videos down in my basement, and especially in the night, it gets pretty creepy down there. So it's always good to have just someone <laughs> like someone with you that shares your same passions and just like helping you along the way. You know, that's that's the best part about it all. Yeah, and that that probably is like the film it is sort of like a uh, artistic short film that just so happens to be lego like that's just the medium it feels like there's a distinction there like it's not just a, a brick film like any other which is probably why it felt uh, quite special to a lot of people and won the contest <laughs> mm. yeah like i never think of never think of like a film as like a stop motion i always think of it as like an actual film, right? You know, like if I was going to do this live action, I'd want to do it the same way, right? And uh, mm. stop motion exactly is just that medium, you know? How do I like get my ideas presented? And that's the most important part is like, for me at least, is like presenting my ideas and stop motion is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. I think plus, um, I think stop motion gives you so many uh, opportunities and, and outlets to create things which would just be so hard to do in live action practically, you know, on a practical level. Just um, the moment you start working on a live action project, 
uh, you realize just how much uh, real life just gets in the way. <laughs> um, there, there's not just like what's what's physically possible, but also I guess all the permissions and stuff you have to sign, the safety issues, and yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> a lot of paperwork. That was something that I was actually thinking about uh, a little while ago. I was like thinking, like, what if I were to make like a live action film? And I was like, it's weird to think of like, like my films. Think of if like your film is live action, like the same shots but live action. Like, it would be a completely different like something that I'm not used to seeing. I don't know what like at least for my films. Like, if our film was completely live action. Like, the shots and such, like, wouldn't, it would f still feel cartoony or like a, like some kind of animation almost. Because I feel like animation and live action are both, sometimes, they're depending mostly on the director, I guess, but they're filmed in different ways, you know? Like, it's weird to think about, I don't know. It's like, if my film was live action, same shots, same story, same everything, same editing, like... It would be. It would feel like a completely different live action film than anything I've really seen. I feel like. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I guess. I guess there is some kind of in between, where like you know, you, somewhere between making a brick film, which uh, is you know where you're you're looking at it uh, in the same way that you would you know make a live action film, and maybe there's also uh, a live action film where you're shooting it as you would an animation. <laughs> And also another thing that I was thinking about, like, when I'm filming, like, a video, like, before when I was, when I first started out, I was, like, refraining from, like, we were saying, like, doing all this technical stuff. Like, especially, it's mostly just, like, flying and, like, uh, practical effects that I fear most. <laughs> but nowadays, it's, like, I kind of realize, like, I'll find a way, like, like, there's a way, there's a way to do this that's probably not going to look what I expect it to, but, like, might as well try it, you know, like, experimentation is what I, like, live for in these films now. I just, like, I'll find a way to experiment, like, a fire and explosion effect, you know, if that makes sense. Like, mm. I'll just try to, try to imagine it in different ways, I guess. Yeah. I think that, um, uh, setting yourself the sort of challenge of always trying to do something unique and different to what you've done previously is one of the things that continues to make brick filming or just like you know making videos in general something that uh it makes it feel it continue to be fresh and um m you know feel new um no matter how long you've been doing it you know uh, i think you kind of need those those sort of uh challenges um in order to actually continue to be motivated to to make things <laughs> oh yeah for sure and every time you make a film you like pick up new ideas that you can use in uh, the next film. So that's kind of, I guess, how we uh, got our style or, is, you know, making, you know, films. And then each film is kind of like, oh, we liked this from that. And then we'll take this and then it will be, now we have something completely new. And that's something awesome about uh, stop motion is that you can do that quite freely. Mm -hmm. And Lego too. Because I know for me, like, I was able to get the sets together pretty quickly because of basically just like using the same uh, set building principles and techniques that I've designed sets with before. So I could pretty quickly just, yeah, take all the ideas I've had before and just reuse them and get some brawl sets built pretty quick. Yeah, that's, that's uh, one thing like, but I think last brawl, uh, my Captain Stewart video, that's, I definitely reused a lot of like, not even just for that film, like, I'll, like, build this and then reuse it in another shot. But, like, all those sets I built out of Lego uh, went on to be recycled to different videos, you know. And that was kind of, like, that was one thing I was, like, whenever I make sets, I usually don't break them up. I just throw them into a bin and then forget about them. And then, I'll, like, next time I need to make a film, I'll, like, Huh, let me look through the bin of the forgotten, like, Lego. All the Lego <laughs> I use from a film, I'll just dump it to clean it up. I'll just dump it into a bin and then come back to it next time. And I'm like, oh, I could use this and this and this. Yeah, it's just kind of funny. It's recycling old set pieces. And, like, the uh, for our Thack film, 
we used cardboard buildings and that was definitely like it was fun to use cardboard you can make some pretty fun stuff out of cardboard so we decided to do that for this film as well as like all those ideas from fact and stuff like that mm -hmm. just translate over mm -hmm. a lot of paint though a lot of paint <laughs> that was it definitely wasn't the funnest process making those very stressful it's definitely good for scale I've never done any like cardboard buildings, but I have some ideas in mind for uh, some large scale shots I want to do where yeah, it wouldn't be economical to buy the Lego just for a really brief shot. So I'm kind of thinking, yeah, got to get some construction materials going. That's what I realized. I'm like, there's no way I have that many, that much Lego to build this. So let's do it out of cardboard and <laughs> hopefully people will understand. <laughs> I also yeah, think it gives it something different to look at. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I think people find it really novel. Like, I think with the with this Brawl film, I, I mean, I was certainly thinking like, oh, wow, look at the cardboard buildings. It's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, um, same with the with your stack entry as well. I mean, I'm thinking that um, with a lot of it, it's like sometimes it's just, it's just like a, like lights and, and, and different things. Sometimes you can't, you know, because of it being quite dark and it's sort of like a night time, you can't, like, clearly see like what everything is but just all these sort of like, co elements com combining um make for it to be like this really interesting setting you know yeah yeah that's what i like especially since last fact we like lost so much time due to computer issues we were like just trying to come up with like we already had we already knew we wanted to do buildings but we were like the building the cardboard definitely made it a lot better um so like, like we just decided like since we lost so much time, like let's just hone in on the visuals, and all of that, and not worry too much about other things, you know. I think mm -hmm. Penta, you said before like it's all about the idea, right? So it's like if you have cardboard buildings in the back and they look good, it's all about the idea. It's like people mm -hmm. understand that, and it can give a nice little flair to uh, your films. Yeah, but I think like also yeah, speaking of the ideas like. It's not not just that the film has these like visual touches that are unique, but like certainly what would help it be a, a first place winning film is the the story ideas. And you know, I think a lot of people were impressed that this brawl film had like you know it touched on some sort of uh, big picture ideas. Like this, this was mentioned on the results stream. You know like life and death and sort of like spiritual ideas uh, conveyed in a way that would would play to any audience uh, which I think is always mm. a great benefit that's actually like what I I don't know this is what I was another thing I was thinking about is like Corbin makes really good stories and just like really compelling like like scripts you know and so I kind of just thought about, I was like, if I can come up with some kind of gimmick to kind of draw the people into the, the, like the film, you know, like filming outside, that's, that's kind of interesting, you know, people will be like, oh, this is actually pretty interesting. And then they'll, I assume they like look more into the story aspect of it and then find, cause with me, like I'll, I'll watch a film that has a deep meaning, but I won't really fully get it unless I'm invested in the into something else you know i'm the mm. visual if i get something that makes me want to want more of the film i guess that makes sense and when i'm writing like stories and stuff i think the biggest like tip i'd have is just don't underestimate your audience like the audience mm. will eventually understand it even if they have to watch it a few times and just like with story elements you can make them as big as you want but it's always better to like cut back and that's one thing with this film that i really was it it was a challenge but it was worth it was uh what are the most important like uh, motifs and like elements that you want to have in your story to contribute to something that has a little bit more substance i guess and with the writing process that's definitely what i thought about was like i want to have a fun film that everyone can enjoy but just like a short film, I want it to have some kind of substance and bigger picture ideas mm -hmm. laced into it. And I think I'm really proud of the writing on this film. Yeah, I, you should be proud. 
Definitely. There's lots of intricacies that people wouldn't notice, and I think that's kind of what gives the writing a special flair, I guess, is you add, when you're writing, you add things that only you as the writer would get. Like, I watched this film, and it means something completely different to me, and mm. uh, that's something that is just so special about, like, writing and making stories as a whole. It's like an intimate kind of relationship with your film is that's going to be different for everyone and it's fun to share that yeah, yeah. Definitely. that's a great quality to, great quality to have that it's not just telling the audience what it's directly trying to convey in a very blunt manner like different people you know could consider it differently depending on what they're bringing to it absolutely yeah I think- I think that um, uh, I think it's great to kind of you know have all these considerations. Um, yeah. With, with ha- having something which you know that, that actually has a meaning and and you know has like different ways people can interpret it, um, but you know not finding a way where you can convey things uh, just the right way without kind of you know basically spelling out yeah this mm-hmm. is uh, audience this is what this thing means, <laughs> <laughs> um, and also I think. Um, the yeah seeing how you know it's these things are conveyed not just through um what's said um you know like within the script but also it's accompanied by you know the cinematography the the style the music the all these different elements combining to really help convey a a message and a story i think yeah you you need to you need to kind of like have a full appreciation of, of all the elements coming together really for it to to really work out yeah with the writing process it's always better to have like uh these big picture ideas in mind because then you can easily come up with ways to incorporate things and like the thematic elements in our film you know like live rich die richer it was like uh the the name of the film is literally what it is and that that phrase alone can be uh broken broken down a little bit like what does it mean to actually die richer? Is it like money? Like, is it monetary or is it, uh, you know, is it more spiritually? And that's definitely the biggest, like, like having these big picture ideas, it definitely inspires like the writing process to have more intricacy and, uh, I don't know, I guess more depth to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like there's not a lot of people bringing these sort of considerations to brick filming. So like when it does crop up it's going to take people further in contests at least <laughs> in brick film contests when i was looking at the entries uh usually i have a pretty pretty good idea of what's going to win a brawl contest like usually i go through the playlist and there's like one entry that just leaps out and it's like yeah obviously that's gonna win like last year it was a, a brick tavern films one but this year like there was a lot of good entries and i was having a harder time imagining what's going to win the contest and i was looking back at a few of them and you know you scroll down to the comments and there's a bunch of different entries where people in the comments are saying like, oh, this one's definitely going to win or I hope this one wins. This is my favorite, you know. Uh, but when I was re-watching them, yeah, it was really on the second watch when I was watching this one that you made. And I was thinking, yeah, this one, it has a, a certain special feeling about it. Like, it I, again, I find it hard to explain, but it just... It just felt like it had a special quality to it, and I was thinking, uh, yeah. Now that I've now that I've watched it a second time, I, I hope this one wins, <laughs> and then it did. So I was happy. Well, thank you, thank you. Another great film to like uh, talk about is the the second place winner. That had some really, I thought that had really great writing as well, and that has no, there's no voice lines in that, and I think kind of thinking about your film more as like a short film like how do i want to convey a message in a short amount of time really yeah it brings up your the quality i guess yeah the second place one was amazing but actually i'm i'm thinking if we're if we're kind of veering towards yeah, bit... talking about these entries <laughs> should we actually you know do a, an official kind of yeah cap on to the to the discussion yeah um, we should transition over to the yeah, top ten. Sure. yeah sure so I actually um so before um we kind of go into the top ten, um I was wondering if we yeah, if there's said like any uh, any entries that did make a top ten that um you know we would be kind of interested in kind of like I guess highlighting uh, or talking a little bit about. Um well I mean there's one that I guess stood out to me. Maybe it's just pull it's a it's attracting the goofy side of me, but <laughs> it's called goofy antics and stuff. 
my <laughs> orbital lizard studios i don't know what it was about this film but it just stood out to me and i it just like reminded me of a film i would have wanted to make like <laughs> back like a while ago like just something that like it's just fun to make you know very colorful like quite random but just you know i don't know i just really like this this film it just brings out the goofy side of me you know <laughs> yeah. i like how over the lizard stuff is goofy but then it also has these sort of like uncanny horror moments just yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i i really like this one as well um it's just kind of um yeah there's 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 a, there's a moment in it um the, like you know when like for just like one frame his his face suddenly changes to a clone trooper for like no reason <laughs> and <laughs> yeah that part is funny <laughs> um and i i think it like actually has a genuinely interesting like story um you know like these these if these weird kind of like you know heads just like hanging hanging around to see like you know it was in the world um and then the, the, the kind of story plays out and then he turns into one of the heads in the ground like that's such a interesting idea yeah i like that it kind of you know it, the story kind of loops around in that way you know it kind of implies that this keeps happening <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was i really like <laughs> one of the things that just like it's just uh just funny to me like when he's coming home after when after he visits the shop he's like there's just a door, and then there's a hole, like, in the wall right next to the door. <laughs> he walks right through it, and it's like, it's just like, <laughs> and it's building up as he's walking back. He's like, who, like, I wouldn't have thought of that. It's just, it's just funny. It's just like, I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean. But it's like misdirection. It's, yeah, it's just funny. It's like, it's like, I don't know. It's <laughs> That's something I love about the, uh, the Goofy Antics film is, like, all the weird, like, exactly misdirections that it takes. It gives it a really nice... At- atmosphere really goofy <laughs> atmosphere yeah i like it it's a good it's a good little watch there, there really were a lot of good ones and a lot were you know when when their placement was announced i was kind of thinking like oh how is that not top 10 but then when i was looking over the top 10 again later i was thinking oh yeah all the ones that are in the top 10 are also obvious top 10 films so <laughs> yeah I, I don't know what i'd kick out in favor of some of the slightly lower ones but I, I loved Sully's entry, uh, Le Lien de l'Amour. Uh, again, like Formal Lens is one that's really, really strong visuals and no dialogue. Just yeah, really well done visual storytelling. Uh, and the lighting, the color is just, yeah, incredible. But also something about it, like everything looks really large, <laughs> like... However he shot it, he's managed to make, you know, all these small objects look massive on screen. I'm assuming this must be done on, like, a DSLR, um, the kind of telephoto lens or something, to kind of make these things feel as big as they do. Yeah, this one was a particularly good one. Um, just, like, uh, again, another one of these, these entries which I could very easily have been in the top ten. Um, it's just so kind of, like, um, I guess very, just like a very polished film. Yeah, I'd say one thing, but um, yeah, uh, what I really love about it is like um, yeah, the lighting, the way in which you know you have like the warm kind of inner lighting, and then you know that kind of cage like thing that the the creature is in is like that kind of cold um, bluish light, um, and the way that's sort of divided is um, it's just really nice, you know. Um, I really like that kind of thing. The purposeful lighting. Yeah. It, was a, it was a good watch. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Speaking of lighting, one that had insane lighting was that Donju film by Aero Nomad. That film, I really like uh, like Blade Runner. That movie's awesome. And it really gave me that. Or like Dune. Gave me that kind of vibe. And I just loved the lighting in that film. And the animation was really, really well done as well. Well, we'll mm-hmm. talk about it when we get in, get to <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, we'll get. We're talking it. about other films right now, but I or, I absolutely yeah. love that one. Yeah, it's I also really movie. like the uh, McDonald's one. I made this in a week or something like that. <laughs> where he steps on a a mine like an anti personnel mine just in a McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know what a, that film just. That feels like something I would make back in my day too, especially because I would use that same that same modular building in like a lot of my films. And uh, 
don't know, that one was hilarious to me. I loved that film. That didn't place uh It was twenty something. On the on was the twenty two. Twenty twenty second, yeah. On the wiki it's it's under its actual name. <laughs> Domino effect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Domino effect. Yes, yeah. I'm glad that placed. I love that film. It was hilarious. I think it's funny the the title because it 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 is uh, very close to being the title of the um, Bro uh, twenty sixteen winner, uh, his Domino Effect. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I know uh, Penta, you, you made the joke that uh, in, in the stream that if it was called his Domino Effect, it would win. <laughs> <laughs> There were a few that didn't make the results there. I, I knew, like, watching them the first time around, I knew they wouldn't rank, but I really liked them anyway. Uh, one of them was the, like, robots speaking numbers entry. It was only yeah, like 30 that seconds. Was, that was so yeah. bizarre, but that was, that was really, it was short, that was funny. But I, yeah. That one was just like, it was really it was interesting to watch. And and then there was the, the pizza hat entry was another really good, weird one. <laughs> See. Yeah. I don't actually know if I saw that one. So many entry, entries, it's hard to remember them all. Yeah, there were so many. But another one that just missed the top 10, that were, it could have easily been a top 10 contender, was a, a Brick Histories entry, Desert Requiem. Oh, yeah, that one that was, was actually super good. Yeah, Brick History makes really good, like, his animation is just, I'm jealous. Like, <laughs> it's a really yeah. good animation. Doesn't he make it on a, I mean, the only reason I say it is just some of the music that he uses from the stop motion studio app i recognize it <laughs> so that leaves me to think that he makes it on it like on a phone. i don't know if he does but i like that music just those songs just bring me back like i love his videos his videos i'm subscribed to his videos yeah definitely that's that was a, a really good one um like the animation um and just how expressive it was and, and like fluid the animation was was just like yeah, that was really cool, and um, you know, it, it has a, a realistic um, panic attack in in brick film form. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a uh, you know reason for it to be in, in top ten when it wasn't. You know, come on, come on, guys! I just couldn't believe that breathing animation. <laughs> <laughs> it just it it shocked me. Like, wow, that was incredible. <laughs> yeah, that one shot where he's breathing is like that blew me away. I was like, we tried doing that kind of thing one time for fun. And it's so hard to do that kind of like facial animation. Yeah, I, I, it's. I think like that. That you know, when he kind of raises the torso, um, like that's the kind of thing that I, I wouldn't even consider like being something. And yeah. then like, oh yeah, like seeing it played out like that, it just it works like so well. Like it's such a clever technique. Um, yeah. There's... I kind of feel like you could easily do it in a way that where it wouldn't work and it would look very strange, but it was just done really, really right here. Yeah. Well, one entry that I, I did actually really like, which I uh, didn't place in the top 25 at all, was um, Fruitful Encounters by uh, Chalios Animations. It had a really nice, like, um, it's like road. Um, and <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just kind of a cool vibe, I guess. <laughs> uh, it was the kind of, I like the how like you know riding off into the sunset kind of thing. Yeah, I was kind of kind of like that one. I guess because because I'm here, I can <laughs> I could talk a little bit about my entry. I guess um, Robot Revamp, which <laughs> came uh, 14th place. Uh, so I have briefly uh, sort of talked about it uh, earlier on, but um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed um, uh, making this one. So probably probably some of the most fun I've had like actually making a bro entry. Um, and like very different to like anything that I'd like done before and especially like the scale. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was kind of a fun process and especially kind of co collaborating with Joshua Nelson on the, with, you know, who did the music. Um, and in kind of like s super like quick as well. Like I, I sort of, uh, the first thought I had in mind was like, oh yeah, I, I, I like the idea of having, uh, this like, factory with all these sounds and you know it kind of slowly turns into like a musical sequence uh, with all the sounds from the factory and then i basically just had like a paragraph long kind of like synopsis and i sent that to joshua nelson and then within about like 12 hours he came up with the rough draft of the of the piece and then like i only uh, like 
only you know, almost it was almost complete by that point. Um, and then I just kind of based it off off that. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it though. The song was really impressive, and I love like music. And your film has just a really nice. I love how well it goes with the music, and it's super creative. Your your film. I always like your like set design. It's just so like I don't know what it is like. The, and also this whole like robot like what is it assembly line kind of <laughs> genre. I guess it's just always like it's just so satisfying to watch. You know like um. It also reminds me of uh, two. I think it was two by four productions, uh, winning brawl entry. Uh... Mm, scrap. Oh, scrap. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what year it was. It was two years ago. I think it's twenty twenty. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. That. That this like that same kind of robot vibe. That's like it's just like these kind of like assembly lines videos are just. They're, you can't go wrong with them. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. There's, there's, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And I love how like much like music is an inspirer for a lot of films, and mm. it kind of reminds me of my first brawl film where I wrote a song for that, and like animating to the song was a lot of it was a lot of fun, and I love how cohesive the song is in this uh, in your robot event video, and it's just so fun. I love it. It's one of my favorite entries. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's definitely something that I um, I like with the idea of, you know, when it comes to using music in in, in films, is uh, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either have like a piece of music that is you know composed for the film, or you can kind of, I guess, almost compose the film to the music. Um, yeah, which is like I, what you kind of do if you have like um, I guess pre-existing music, um, and. Um, it was kind of similar in this because it, it, I guess it kind of almost was pre-existing if it was, if I was waiting for it to be made in order to actually <laughs> animate. Um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, really fun entry to make. And, um, yeah, it was just cool. Like, yeah, I really enjoyed like coming up with the designs as well, which were like completely kind of like just made up. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was happy to, yeah, I was, it was a fun one to make. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> was one of the robots on the assembly line meant to look like a minion? Um, which one was that? <laughs> oh, like towards the towards the end. It's like, it's, it appears like halfway through. Uh, let me get the time stamp. It's like one twenty one. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe my brain is just broken. I just see anything blue and yellow. I just think it's a minion. Uh, oh, was it? Was it the uh, yeah the one that's like the uh, the the uh, rock star? Yeah, yeah. Rockstar robot. Yeah, that that was that was completely um like not not intentional at all. <laughs> that was just like I I wanted to kind of find because they were like all kind of like mostly kind of grey uh, and, and black kind of um not not a lot of color to them. Uh, I wanted to go mm. for something that was like really colorful, so like yellow and and blue and red. I thought was like a cool combination. I think that's just I think that's just like a, a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they'd all been grey they'd all been grey up to that point, so when that one appeared on the screen first, I was just thinking, Oh, suddenly this one's blue and yellow? Oh I guess it's just a minion joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but actually one one thing, uh real quick, uh, before yeah, I, I don't want to go on too long because it's not in the top ten, but um one thing I uh I was kind of concerned about with this film was like, oh, has the like assembly line Brick is, is the assembly line kind of brick film like uh, too much of a a thing that already exists? Um, and um, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I, I I had a different spell on it enough at least. It goes know. somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I was just like really, I was really satisfied with how the the chopping of the bricks came out. Like that's actually my favorite part of the entire film actually <laughs> it's just seeing the robot like chop the and the having like the knife sound the chung, chung. <laughs> like I said it's just like these assembly line like the I'm just gonna call it a genre it's just I I they're one of my favorite like you don't see them a lot but like when I do see them I'm like that it's just so satisfying to watch and I just it's always like a video you know you'd come back to like on a bad day and you're like i need to <laughs> i i need to watch something that will get my spiritual <laughs> <laughs> oh okay that's that's uh 
Yeah, that's actually a, that's actually a really big compliment, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess with that, we'll we should uh, head over to the the top ten. Um, mm-hmm. With uh, starting off with in a book by Nathan Wells. That's uh, first of all, for really nice to see uh, Nathan Wells come back with another entry into yeah. Brawl. I think he only did Brawl twenty fourteen. Uh, that was his first Brawl, and he came first in that one. So yeah, it has been a while, and it was really nice to see him return to Brawl. Yeah. He, his videos are, like, this video specifically, just like, again, the real-life aspect of it, just a, a bookshelf, but also having the Lego elements, like, that's, you know, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> and, like, the fact that, like, the animation, like, you can't go wrong with Nathan Wells, like, he's he's a really good animator. And I just, I really like the animation in this film. Just super creative. Yeah, and, and I think the um, I was just like what really impressed with how much happens within the like really short runtime. Um, because yeah, it's only like you know like a minute and a half long, and yet like it feels like a really satisfying film. You know, <laughs> um, that that the whole thing with the like you know different worlds from from books, uh, seeing that those things come to life, and like you know that yeah Cthulhu comes out and yeah no it's just a it's just a cool um mm-hmm. i say kind of I, I i'm sure nathan wouldn't mind me saying this but like a uh, quite a nerdy film <laughs> a nerdy entry <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly like what one thing i really liked as well is like it's not many figures you know it's like i'm i always like the i'm a sucker for big figs and this isn't even like there isn't really i guess besides a mouse and i guess a kill through but there's no real like i don't even know how to explain like you know obviously no mini figures but it's like it, he really relies on the vi- visuals rather than you know like the more of like the character like i don't know that's, hopefully i'm making sense but you know it's yeah. uh less about like we were saying like getting the story across like what's like what's going on? Like this thing's coming out. Like mm-hmm. I, I like that. I, I love yeah. the shot of the book falling on the uh, the monster. That was yeah, it's really, really impressive. And like I know uh, a couple of days after Brawl, Nathan was sort of saying like that he was rewatching the film and basically thinking that that's it. Like that's all I got done because I mean. There's so much packed into it and so many builds and like I love the Dune world and the you know the the candle build is great, uh, but it did feel like it ended pretty soon. <laughs> hmm. You know, it's kind of like packed film length. Um, so I feel like that's why it's I don't want to say only tenth because like obviously top ten in a contest of 154 entries is like really hard to get into, but like um you know at at this scale obviously if if it was if there was slightly more of a more story i guess a slightly longer film at the scale then it's going to be ranking even higher but then obviously that's just not going to happen for brawl mm. i th- i think it's yeah it, it's interesting um, when it comes to the placement of entries like this uh, i think it's something that, you know it's like important to consider um for people is i guess the idea that um simply on a technical level and if you just you know looking at this as a film without like considering t- the interpretation or whatever like i mean this is probably you know like one of the most polished and like well put, put, put together entries um within the you know whole like i guess set list really but yeah it, it is all about yeah. like considering all of the elements isn't it within a, a, a film like usually when i watch a film you can like sometimes you can tell like oh yeah you probably like rush past stuff but with this film it was like there's no shots where it's like it seemed like he was rushed out, you know? Like, it really seems like he took his time on, on a lot of the stuff, you know? And that's what I appreciate. <laughs> mm-hmm. The um, I, I do actually really like the way that when the book falls onto, like, Cthulhu and the way he sort of crushes and it's, like, it, it almost feels like he kind of, like, turns into ink. I don't know if that was, like, an intentional yeah. thing, but that kind of... I think that is kind of what's happening. <laughs> but, of course, just the idea of, like, building the Cthulhu monster for Brawl that's just remarkable. <laughs> yeah. Kind of feels almost like a dad, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could head over to Ninth Place, which is Johnny Thunder and the Lost Treasure of Lock Arca- Arcade um, mm. by Starbrick Studios. Another eight-minute entry. <laughs> yeah. This film was like, 
our this is like our brother film like and mm. at least lengthwise like this i i remember the first time like i was scrolling when it, when the fir- when the playlist first comes out i just kind of scroll through first just look at watch the ones that look interesting and i saw this one i saw how long it was i was like whoa eight minutes it's like mm. that's our that's like our film and i, yeah. I started watching it, and i was like i really like this film. like mm. it just reminds me of the classics like you know story like again it's another film that i would have like made like what a while ago like this i've always loved this kind of genre and i think he really pulled it off well especially that opening scene with i don't know his name but the like professor guy kind of just you know in his office like that and his butler like peeks through the door like <laughs> i just i don't know why it's just it just looks really good in the animation it's really solid it's a good film it's a good film you know, I think we always want to emphasize that, like, making a longer brick film doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do well. <laughs> uh, in fact, it can often be a detriment. I, I feel like most of the time when we see super long entries in the playlist, we're like, oh, God, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's eight minutes. Oh. But this one and your one, you know, they didn't feel like eight minutes at all. Yeah, I feel like... um Starbucks Studios and Joko have managed to both have like really good um Johnny Thunder like series. <laughs> series, yeah. Um and um I really like that this is uh, quite you know quite different to the other ones in that it's like a quite a different kind of adventure. Yeah, and no, it, it it's uh, you know obviously great yeah, you know, fantastic voice acting from Jay Silver, Jay Silver. Uh, who who was a you know took, did uh, a lot of voices in this uh in this role. Mm-hmm. And um, I believe he plays both. two different characters in this. Yeah, two different characters. Right. Yeah, yeah, and they sound different. That's that's always impressive when you can play two two different characters. So sound like a completely different person. Yeah. But yeah, this this film was like when when they're talking about the dynasties back then. Like, I just love how the background is just like you can obviously tell that it's like a cardboard, but like especially out of focus you can't really tell but then like it just works so well like i just like again it just brings me back to those older kind of film styles you know it's always just a great watch you know yeah yeah definitely i think that um i do really like um creative use of non-lego elements uh especially with like Mm -hmm. backgrounds and stuff like that it's um it's always i think uh a good consideration if you can use non lego elements, especially if you're limit, you know, limited with you have know, Lego you have. Yeah, it's it's uh, it can when done well, it can be really good. And and I especially uh, really like the uh, the shots in the train when it's like they're driving past, and that was really good, really well done. Oh, this one has a train as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was what I was just about to say. It's like the, it's also eight minutes. There's a train. Like I don't know. Kind mm-hmm. of our films are kind of the same. <laughs> no, if you animate a train, you'll get in the top twenty at least. Yeah, if it's eight Probably. eight minutes long, it includes a train. Yeah, winning factors. I was gonna say, I don't know if you guys know this film. I think it's a pretty popular film though. Um, it's by Mob Deli, I think his name is. I can't remember the name of the film, but it's it's about Johnny Thunder and his crew. They're in Egypt. Egyptian holiday. Egyptian holiday. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah. this almost seems like the next like Johnny Thunder story. It feels like, or like a prequel to that. Like, I don't know what it is, but like, it's just like it reminds me like the dynamic between. I guess in the in the Mob Deli one, it's like a little bit different, but uh, I don't know. It just it feels like a a prequel or like a sequel to that one. <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like Johnny Thunder is making his way into like a. I don't know. He's iconic to these contests. It feels like like every That's single contest will get uh, Joko's film with Johnny Thunder, and they're always just fun and like there's a really special place in uh, Brawl. Like it's kind of it almost feels like it'd be missing something <laughs> if it wasn't there. <laughs> a Johnny Thunder film. Top ten gotta be in top ten, Johnny. It is nice to have certain brick filmers and series that just keep showing up every year in Brawl or in Tech, and like, yeah, yeah, you come to expect them. I think it is really kind of like um, a testament to the people who make the you know the Johnny Thunder films that they so 
often place in the top ten, <laughs> um, or like you know at least quite high in the in the the, in the uh, entries. But the um, what I do really like uh, that there is something very specific, uh, very specific vibe to um, like a successful Johnny Thunder film. I feel like that just feels like a quintessential kind of brick film kind of um tone if that kind of yeah makes sense like yeah and it always feels it always feels iconic in a way yeah i don't i don't get tired of, of seeing like johnny thunder films which uh you know i do with with some themes <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it's very interesting how johnny thunder and, and certain other lego themes like exist in a sort of space where like they don't feel like <laughs> ip rich <rhythms. laughs> yeah even though they are existing characters and you know anyone can make a Johnny Thunder Rick film, but yeah, they just they just feel slightly different. When it comes to the characterization and and like what makes a f- you know Johnny Thunder film, uh, Johnny Thunder film, it's like it's entirely based on brick films, really. You know, it's the brick filmers are kind of created the cat, you know, made the character who who he is, really. I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Well, I mean, you know, people are sort of drawing on the old Johnny Thunder media they remember. Uh, not just the sets, but also the characterizations in, like... I mean, I, I can remember the old, like, games on the old website. Yeah, it's true, actually. You're, you're, Ancient memories. That's, like, probably a, a part... That's probably, like, a bit of a, a blind spot for me. So when I say that, mm. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not really that familiar with, like... I played um, the Lego Island 2, and Joy Thunder was in was in that, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, in the, yeah this, this reminds me of, like, a Indiana Jones. I guess it's just because... Like this adventure, like treasure hunter kind of treasure thing. hunter. But you can't like honestly with these adventures, especially just Johnny Thunder. You can't go wrong, honestly. Like it, it's hard to mess it up. Mm-hmm. I sometimes, especially with Johnny Thunder, it's like it's always just gonna be like unless you entirely rework the characters. I feel like if you're gonna make a Johnny Thunder film, it's like there's no really like reworking like the character, like even like different. Brick filmers like different brick films with Johnny Thunder. It's like it's gonna, it's all gonna feel like it's all tied together. I feel like <laughs> every time I see a Johnny Thunder film, I'm like they're all like back to back with his adventures. Yeah, it's kind of shared, but it's it's allowed to be shared. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like it's kind of become a staple almost. Like Lego Batman films have, like uh, I don't know. It's just really, it's always fun to see a Johnny Thunder film. Yeah, I think as well, there is, uh, you know, it, it is one of these kind of, I don't know, films, films, especially like, uh, yeah, like this one by Starbuck Studios and like his, like, uh, Joey Thunder series. It, it just feels like, yeah, it's just one of those kind of things that you could just, just watch, you know, from time to time, just to, uh, it's just a nice, fun series of films to watch, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's just a good film, like, you can just come back. For a long day, you know, and just watch these kind, of, like watch through the brawl playlist, the top ten, just feel good playlists. <laughs> <laughs> um, so shall we move to uh, eighth mm. place? Yeah, Legal Ties from Yesteryear by Siltrak. This is a good film. <laughs> yeah, I loved how he was. The lawyer was pink. Like <laughs> he's different from everyone else, and it kind of films kind of all about him, and he's kind of you know self-centered almost and i loved i just loved how he was being that was a really good story choice yeah it really kind of like separate him like you can definitely like especially when it does a flashback you can like definitely tell that like these are the same guys you know because they have i it is kind of i feel like it was also a comedic choice to just make him look have the same face the same everything besides like the fact that they have like 80s haircut Ziltrak <laughs> <laughs> he oh man his videos are so good yeah Ziltrak has a really distinct style uh really great comedy style and like you know sort of low frame rate animation but like so carefully weighted uh like it's it's you know done really successfully one thing I just have to appreciate is the voice acting in this. Like, yeah, that oh, yeah, voice Blandier acting is good. really good. <laughs> Blind you. It was funny. Like, I feel like um, because so basically we we watched like the we had like a a watch party a few of us um, and um, this one I feel like it it seemed to have like a particularly big reaction 
um, for like I think especially when it came to like the the we had the um, the credits in the beginning and it was like um, oh pl- please be was it like we were like please be really please oh no Blandia that's it yeah, please, please be Blandia like and like Blandia was there like really was there like we were like cheering it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um now this is gonna be good <laughs> yeah and like um yeah they just like i don't know i think that um the combination of like those three uh castle rock as well just make it so good it's like so funny um and uh it just fits with the the vibe of the like the animation and the, just like the style of the film so well um yeah just just like a really good like set of, of voice actors and I also really enjoyed like the set design. It's just so like simple, but like good, like well, or like you can definitely tell he try. He really tried. He emphasized on like what he wanted. You know, like it's simple, but in a not simple way. If that makes sense, you know, like mm-hmm. there's like the I I love it when people do tile floors, and oh. like that, and then like the bat the the walls. It's just like. <laughs> concrete like brick <laughs> it's just carefully placed but like it's just a solid set to use i'm always impressed that he manages to frame stuff in 4-3 really distinctively you know i feel like most of the time if you see 4-3 you just think oh it's just 4-3 because it's just some technical limitation but with this you can tell like oh he's actually framing it for 4-3 intentionally like all the shots are yeah, are set up definitely. like properly. I think it's, it works. It looks so nice for like you know close up shots, uh, particularly. Yeah. But uh, there's one there's one um, gag uh, that I just think is so funny uh, towards the end with the the rat in the They're soup running around the table. I oh, know the the, the, <laughs> the, no, the the rat in the soup bit. Like <laughs> I just think it was so funny where it's like that that reveal and then it cuts it cuts back to this like flashback. And it's like he just doesn't notice this massive rat in the, in the bowl, which is like mm-hmm. bigger than the bowl. And then suddenly it's like, "There's a rat in my soup." <laughs> <laughs> that part, is, this film is just super funny. It's like yeah. it's just so obvious, but like that's what I love about just this. I feel like there's films like this that are just like they're simply funny. It's like <laughs> it's just so obvious, like the giant rat in the soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just a great use of Lego pieces, like not just the rat, but the funny looking Lego faces and Lego hair pieces, the 80s hair. And that's one thing I loved was the character design, like how they go back in time and it's like the 80s, totally looked 80s-esque. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's just like, um, again, it's, a, it's another thing of um, something I think about a lot, I think, since like Penta kind of brought it up, like, I don't know, in a pre- maybe like a previous uh uh podcast but the the idea of you know what what works to- what works tonally as a brick film what you know what feels like a, 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 a the perfect tone and i feel like um this one is like a just just works so well as a brick well, film so just, yeah it's sort of like the tone um and like the, the comedy of it i think playing playing into the, the legoness of it i think yeah yeah i like i think it's just like he pulls it. He pull. He pulls off this style really well, and it's all these different factors of not only the comedy, but the set design, the character design, the animation, mm-hmm. like all of that, like perfectly ties this film together. The style, you know, and that again, like I love seeing shots with the ceiling in it, and that one. There's that one shot of like the underhead shot, you know. I mean, you can just see like the bass play on top. Like, I appreciate that. That was that was a good choice. <laughs> so shall we head over to uh, number seven? The uh, uh, another Johnny, Johnny Thunder film. Yeah, Johnny Thunder and the Dramatic Irony Bridge. Which, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. One one Johnny Thunder film in ninth place and another in seventh place. That's quite. That's quite something. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are yeah as as to be expected from. Joe Joe K Twenty Thunder film. It's uh yeah, it's, it's it's brilliant. Like the the way that the just the the tone and like the the like the energy that that Joko brings yeah. in to these films is just so it's so good <laughs> and so like unique to Joko. I I love his style. It's like all it's just like he's really good at like 
you know, the camera movements, and, like, I don't know what frame rate he films at, but it looks like he, like, sl- switches it out around a little bit, you know? He, like, is I don't know. I just really like his animation. The camera movements and the, like, one-shot stuff that he does. It's just so creative, like, it makes me want to try doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Something I, I always find interesting with, like, jo- 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 a lot of, like, Joko's stuff is the, the way that they kind of manage to... It's quite, they're always kind of chaotic, but just, just, uh, coherent enough for it to be kind of like, to be able to follow it clearly, I guess is the. <laughs> mm-hmm. He plays into that dramatic irony perfectly. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, it's a good compliment when you say that, uh, you didn't think about something or you didn't notice something. And it definitely, it took me more than one watch before I started thinking, like, Oh yeah, the the background is like really well done. Yeah. And, like the first time I watched it, it just blended right in. It just felt like this is the environment. But yeah, like watching again, I'm like, wow. Like I guess it's a screen in the back. It's fantastic. I didn't even know that. I thought I would have thought it was like green screen or like I don't even. That's what that's kind of what I thought. But a screen like. Yeah, I think it's a monitor because like it's casting light on the the Lego pieces. That's really clever, actually. And Joko has used that a few times now, actually. He, it works he, really well. He likes to use, he uses a lot of good practical effects like that. Yeah. He and also the water like in the soup, the whale, the well. Like it's just like I, you can see it in like one shot, you can see it like kind of draining out of the Lego because it's not waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the the way that um Joy Thunder like um you know, dries his hat like and it's like um there's like this sort of brick replacement there where it's like it's like this sort of like non lego um smaller scale bricks just like kind of moving moving around um and it's like oh yeah know, like he's wringing out his hat yeah yeah so really clever very good film i like this i love the lighting in it too it's super distinct mm-hmm. like the orange and the blue it looks really really nice Mm. And the, the light coming from underneath, like from the lava. And I love this spaghetti, spaghetti like uh, <laughs> credits. <laughs> yeah, give me like Napoleon Dynamite kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I'm always impressed by anyone who manages to pull off like a uh, a half decent uh, end credit sequence because uh, that's mm, always my yeah. like the last thing I think about. Like I think I was gonna say the exact same. I hate <laughs> doing the credits. Like I hate choosing a font and like choosing the background color. Like oh god. So yeah, was... doing it in camera in some novel way, it's great. Yeah, I remember like, with my entry, it was like literally. Um, I had like twenty minutes before the deadline. I was like, ah, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I I just gotta quickly type this in, export it, done. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I I and I like how he just puts in the little Easter egg. Like he switches the first level. Like it's like Thony Jonder. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed that, but it's like he spells their names wrong. I'm assuming intentionally. I'd like to think so. <laughs> Wait, is it? What I just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thony Gender. Thony. I don't know if that was. It says cast J as Thony Gender. So, I don't know if that was intentional or if that's like an actual character. But I just thought <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming so. Yeah, really, really enjoyed this. Really enjoyed this entry. It's uh, yeah, the the, the head that like holds in place at the end. That's such a great gag. <laughs> that's funny. I love it when stop motion. Like animations have more of a cartoony like vibe to them. This definitely yeah. has that cartoony element to it, and I love that. Yeah. So should we um, head on to um, the sixth place entry, uh, mm. "Love and Literature" Volume One and Two uh, by Joshua Nelson, Stuart Nelson, and Keith Nelson. Um, and uh, yeah, th- thanks to the wiki for for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was like. Um, I was honestly kind of expecting this to be like top three. Um, I was just like uh, absolutely blown away by just like the sheer amount of just like sets and and, and scale um, to the sets, you know. And and as far as I'm kind of aware, like it seems as though a good portion of it was done during the week as well. So um, I don't know if like all of it was done. 
Um, it, it just almost just seems impossible. On Discord, <laughs> uh, they said that like they had a couple of the characters built beforehand, but that was it. Wow, that's that is that's impressive. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one thing with the Nelson Brothers films is like you can always get these crazy like they always have big, really impressive set pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they really like. I feel like these two films. It's always like. There, I feel like it's their trademark. Like whenever you're getting a Nelson Brothers film, it's always going to be big scale, probably, and it's going to have like a lot of impressive sets, and you know it's going to be connected between both channels. <laughs> That's just like I really like how they do one side of the story uh, on one channel and then the other side. Yeah. That's just a really good way to do it. Or like they'll do it perspective wise. You know, I just I just really like how they do their stuff. But of course, yeah, we we do consider them to be one film, essentially, like split across channels so that it gets represented on both channels on YouTube. But kind of like if it wasn't for YouTube, then it could be just one thing. So, yeah, it's ranked as one on the results and it's going to be counted as one in the entry count, or at least I'd I'd have to go back and check to make sure that in previous years it's been counted as one in the entry count. But it definitely was this year anyway. Oh, yeah. I but I mean, again, you got to be like it's impressive like because this the volume one is four minutes and 30 seconds i think the next one is like the same length so that's almost about an eight minute film so Mm. like technically there are like three eight minute films in this (laughs) in this uh whole brawl like that's just crazy yeah that's so cool actually that there's more than that because wasn't max butcher's entry similar length yeah, that was like one eight minutes as well, nine minutes even. Yeah, um, that's another notable one that we didn't mention already was Max Butcher's. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Max Butcher was um, yeah, it's, it's a, the the big return. Yeah, there's there's a lot of eight minute films. I mean, to make the top twenty, um, within the top twenty five, I mean, there's quite a few eight minute films. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Loved how they did. Uh, instead of mini figures, they decided to go with like big figs. Mm-hmm. Definitely, my, my yeah. favorite thing about that is like the really distinct poses of the characters. Especially in brick films, it just leaps out whenever people have like creative poses because it's like really hard to get mini fig poses that like you haven't seen before. <laughs> Especially the um, like the girl character. There's multiple poses that are just like really well set up. And like the. Just again, the design of the characters, just they have a lot of great uses for every like they use pieces like pieces that I would have never guessed you could use it for that. Like, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, prince's yeah. ponytails or like his hair, like, I don't even know what those pieces are really specifically for, they're like for just decoration, I guess. But yeah. they use like they think, like, oh, yeah, we can use these as like his hair, like his hair piece. And it's like the heck like how do you think of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's like so much like consideration and in, in just like yeah the character designs themselves it feels like it's just take so long to <laughs> and yet like there's like so much stuff like that where it's like just extra detail um mm-hmm. that is just sort of um i just can't imagine in a, in a time frame being like being able to figure yeah. yeah figure that out and, and, and be like and still have time to do everything else um but yeah that that thing that's so remarkably rare in brick filming we always say it but you know people who are actually interested in building stuff with lego <laughs> like, like, yeah in a more sort of mock kind of way mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's something I, that, that's I like something i was thinking then actually with that is that um the 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 kind of like designing things in a oh that's so neat I never thought of doing that kind of way it's very much a kind of mock builder kind of thing. Um, yeah. Another thing, one of the things I really liked was the um, her her mother the her shoulders are, are like um, <laughs> motorbike pilot like motorbike helmet things. But that's also like again like really cool, just like idea that like you never thought of as being like a. Like and then you see it like oh yeah it's like a perfect piece for for that <laughs> yeah and the guitar that he plays is like the bass like uh, for the army guys in the Toy Story like that's that's what I remember them from but, like, oh yeah the green bass yeah. piece yeah <laughs> that's like I totally forgot about that Lego piece like <laughs> yeah what the heck it's crazy 
I'm impressed because like it'd be it's so much harder to animate like big figs and like like I could just imagine like being getting so frustrated because I I guarantee they had moments where like their uh, characters probably fell apart yeah. and broken and stuff and I just think it's really impressive that they were able to uh, you know have a really good animation with these really big characters it's really cool and the color palettes look great throughout yeah. Like the the in volume two when he when the prince is in the castle, like talking to the king. Like just that whole set, like that yeah. like I don't think I have like that I don't have the option. guts to do that. Yeah, that's a huge set right there. Yeah, I love all the plant pieces hanging down and also stained glass windows. I, I always love stained glass windows and brick films. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um yeah, I was just like there, just so blown away by the scale of it all. Like, just yeah, not only like if if it was minifigure scale, like it'd be incredibly impressive then. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> setting them the task to to you know go like tr- triple that size, you know, even maybe four times the size of that. It's just like yeah, that's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, this was definitely one of my favorite entries. Yeah, again, another. I think it's like one of these entries again. They like, could easily have been. In the top three, you know, contender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely so. deserved it. I feel like it definitely deserved a little more, honestly. It was, it was like, it was a really good entry. <laughs> Very solid. But, um, yeah, do we, do we want to head over to number five? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, the top five. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, in fifth place, we have uh, Danju by Aero Nomad, who uh, I believe. Yeah, one yeah one sack wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a great film. Yeah, straight straight off the bat, like the that kind of I think you you briefly mentioned it uh, earlier. The like that sort of Blade Runner slash kind of Dune kind of like visual style. Um, yeah, like that, especially like that like early on when he, when he's like in that corridor, um, that is different colored lighting. Like that's yeah, just amazing. Like really mind-blowing <laughs> and the story as well is just like reminds me of like something like mission possible three like that kind of like it's just like sad but also like well constructed great pacing and yeah the corridor again like goodness bro <laughs> how did he do that like the lighting like how the lighting's like moving across yeah, the light moving oh yeah that's that's incredible that part yeah oh cool i love that <laughs> I love it. It's, it has so much atmosphere to it. Like the colors are so prominent and like defined, and everything is so crisp. Yeah, to, to have the light animated, like both both this one and also uh, Joko's one, like I mentioned, like it's one thing to set up the lighting or to set up a, a monitor background, but it's another thing to actually have it moving throughout. Like I can't imagine going going that extra mile for brawl. Mm-hmm. It's super. It was like a really good like touch to the film, really added to to the atmosphere. I loved it. Yeah, it really adds to kind of the build up, doesn't it? Yeah, they, they, I really love the yeah, the, especially like the, the that kind of build up in the first like couple of minutes is uh, is really really well done. Yeah. Oh, and then that like um, final that final like place he he's in, where like the guy with the gun behind that uh, glass that like. It looks like Superman's like uh, yeah. Fortress of Solitude. Like <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, that was a pretty crazy set. Yeah, yeah it's, it's totally like it totally gives me Blade Runner vibes. Like just the atmosphere of the co- like the colors are just so defined, and I just love that about this film. Like the blues, and then the, like it goes from orange to blue, and it's so so crisp. And one thing I love about his cinematography, Aero Nomad, is that like he always gets up close with the characters. Like mm-hmm. it's like it's no usually when I film like characters I'm like kinda of far back, you know, like that's what I kinda yeah. see. But in his films it's like it seems like it's closer up to the face, like it looks more real. He has the probe lens. Yeah. It looks so good. I love it. Yeah, I really I like that, yeah. Getting the camera right up close. When especially yeah, like the that kind of villain monologue, um, the cinematography in that is is like when it's able to go really close up to the the character, that just feels like yeah, that's like that's how they do it in live action, you know that that that, that the cinematography in that was 
was so well done, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I'm so jealous. I want the probe lens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the twist at the end as well is just so, like, like it, it works super well with it. Like, again, it's just sad, but, like, when he, like, throws the headset on the ground in reality, like, that's also, like, a really good set of just, like, a living room, like, <laughs> what the heck? And his use of visual effects, like, computer effects are really well done as well. Like, just, like, the button or, like, the telephone beeping looks really well put together. Mm -hmm. The screens, yeah. But I do feel like saying on the results call, I, I kind of feel like when this was announced as fifth, you could kind of feel the the sense that people were like surprised, like only fifth. And of course, like I wasn't judging this contest, so like I can't actually speak to how it would have played out behind the scenes. But I was kind of thinking to myself, like, yeah, this is clearly the most um, like technically accomplished, solid looking entry. But there was something about the structure where I was kind of thinking, uh, I I know how this is going to go. I mean, I, judging wise, I know how it's going to go. It's gonna it's gonna surprise people when it doesn't come first. Uh, <laughs> the reason being that I feel like the like the first third is a super impressive action sequence. You know, really amazing. And then the second third is like a extended block of dialogue delivered by one character that's kind of explaining a lot of backstory. You know, through this a lot of talking, and then the last third is also a really long dialogue from one character explaining a lot of backstory. And so for that reason I was thinking to myself, the the, the judges are going to it's going to get knocked down for that reason. <laughs> I could I could envision it. <laughs> it's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. But I now that you put it at that, yeah, like uh the main character, like he doesn't really even say anything. That's... And it's like I hope I hope people don't mind me saying some of that, but like <laughs> I I feel like I, I want to explain things like that on podcasts like this sometimes because other otherwise if you don't explain anything then people are like what the hell why why did it you know not go, uh, rank <laughs> as high as I thought it would and it's, if it's just never explained then it's like just well nobody knows <laughs> yeah and it's it is funny because I think that like there isn't a singular like part of it that I, th I feel like. Oh yeah, this is the point. This is the reason why it didn't work. I think it's more the kind of thing of like, yeah, I think it's it is very top heavy. Um, is that the right word? Is that is that? I, yeah, I was, I was yeah. thinking of, of yeah. phrasing it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it is kind of like yeah, towards towards the yeah, the, the sort of like last two thirds of it. It's um, there is a lot of like I, I do remember like I was really vibing with it. I think. Um, Especially towards um, even you know beginning of that monologue bit, I was thinking like, yeah, this is this is going this is going well, and I think it was like it kept going, and I was like, well, okay, he's still he's still talking, he's still going on, um, and I, I was invested in a lot of elements like the lighting and the cinematography. I thought was particularly really um, really good, um, but I could see like, oh, okay, this is yeah, there's a lot of like talk, like a lot of like uh, exposition and sort of. Um, I don't just say let's say, say, say exposition, but like yeah, like that kind of explaining, uh, and then we kind of get another part, yeah, in the in the second, you know, after that as well, and um, it's weird because I kind of like with all that being said, I still really enjoy the film. But yeah, it's still one of the best entries. Yeah, it's always <laughs> it's it is always awkward to like end up sounding like you're coming down harder on like one of the better entries, and you know. That easily could have even ranked one or two spots higher, but it's like I, I, I just I always fear that people, you know, can't even comprehend why it would, why something would get knocked down until you, you know, explain what what at the end of the day is a pretty minor minor nitpicks, but you know, that's what happens. Mm. I think when it comes down to such a a stacked kind of like top ten, uh, especially especially when you get to like the you know the the top five. It's going to be, you know, even if it seems like kind of minor considerations, these things are going to, you know, potentially be at play when, you know, you've got like, yeah, five really strong entries, like, you know, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like this film definitely, like, I feel like it could be part of like uh, something bigger. I feel like, like, I, I'd be happy with seeing like the rest of this story, you know, like seeing the backstory more like. I'd, I'd be, I'd like to see, like, 
another film about this, you know, this particular character. Yeah, I mean, it's so compelling. It's I mean, yeah, totally. If this was like a um, the first five minutes of like a, you know, a longer brick film where like you know a lot of it is like that action scene, you know, like God, this would be yeah, definitely something that. Uh, I don't want to say too much as if I'm saying like, oh yeah, it would be good if it was this, because <laughs> it is good, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like it is a great film. I, yeah, yeah. like probably <laughs> one of my top five. And I think it's a great introduction. Like if he wanted to go into more Donju stuff, it's a great int- introduction to the the character. I think this film would have like it, the non-linear storytelling would have fit really well with this film like uh the monologue that the main or the main bad guy or whatever is giving could have been playing throughout the whole film and hmm. yeah. uh, it would have been really interesting to see it like have a non-linear fashion could have really turned it into a christopher nolan dead wife film <laughs> yeah <laughs> honestly <laughs> yeah I, like this film doesn't look like it was made for bro oh yeah you know? yeah absolutely it looks like it was just something he spent like so long on perfecting. Like it looks super good. I love this film. It's mm-hmm. super good. Mm-hmm. If I was to attempt to make anything like half as impressive as this, it would take me like a year. So yeah, yeah. I'll say that. Yeah, much. like I can't believe the, <laughs> the sets. Like I love that set with the fans, and and you know these sort of details. Like y- you know y- you don't need to have these fans moving in a brawl entry, but it's just it just makes it so much cooler. <laughs> that animation. Even like lighting animation, set animation is always like, like that's always like a plus, like a ch- the cherry on top, you know. It's just, like if you do that, I you're definitely gonna get a high placing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that 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 those fans like that really floored me because it's like one of those things where like I just I could just tell how like an- annoying that would be to animate when you've got other stuff going on. You've got to make sure that like it stays like the same consistent speed. And it's like, I could totally imagine in the middle of doing all of that, it, you know, you forget to do it one frame or something, and then it's like... And it's a moving camera do... shot. <laughs> yeah. There's so many things, that, uh, factors at play there, and it kind of just yeah, works like having, seamlessly. Having to remember everything while also doing a moving camera shot, it's, it's so annoying. Uh, and also as well, I think um, my, what I, I really like about the film um, is um, just how the sets, they really do feel as though, it really just feels as though they're is a world outside of it, you know, which, um, like, I don't know, it, it feels like you really get the impression that this is like a big, expansive world based on the sets. Even though you see such a small amount of it, it feels real, you know. Yeah, it feels big, but like yet intimate as well. And yeah, it's really, really well done. And also we went the extra mile and did a, a brick built title card. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Great opening, great opening. And that stuff is really, like, attention-grabbing, you know? Mm, yeah, for it just sure. makes you want to keep watching the film. Yeah, again, returning to that idea of, like, yeah, when I make my own, I know I'm just, I'm slapping basic text on in the last, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess that, um, uh, Sean, you can introduce oh, yeah. this next one. Yeah, speaking of my own one, yeah, I, I was... I guess I I was surprised to come in at at fourth, uh, with safe as houses, you know, it's it's really hard to predict when with your own films, <laughs> I think. Yeah. I don't know if other people agree. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I've, I was just basically thinking, well, I hope I rank. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and you really nailed down that like, it's like, the raw like the scene the shot where he's like looking out the window with the binoculars. Well, not that particular shot. The one after it, where the like the thief is in like the barrel, <laughs> like the arm, like what what piece was that? Like how did you do that? Yeah, um, that's the the kind of gag that was just inspired by seeing the piece. Like I needed a gag to go there, and I didn't have anything in mind, and I, so I was just sitting down thinking, and like sitting in front of me was a tub of like stick pieces, you know, all all different kinds of just tubes and sticks and just on top of the pile were these like flexible yellow tubes and i don't know i can't remember where they came from i th- i think they're actual lego but i i'd have to look up where i got them like what set they came in but you know i was just 
looking at this yellow tube and I was thinking, oh, it has a hole on, on either end. You know, it's a hollow tube, like, and it's yellow. So if I could just jam a Lego hand in the end of this tube, then I have this really wacky looking extended arm. So that, you know, the, the gag there just wrote itself. Like, I'll just obviously have this cartoon arm just extend and steal money from the other guy. And it did, it did require, like, jamming stuff in the end of the tube to, like, you know, the hand didn't actually fit until I ex expanded it a bit. <laughs> so, like, the piece got completely damaged and, and it got further bent and mangled in animating the shot. But it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, it, like, honestly, this, this film, like, that really, like, oh, that shot made me so happy, <laughs> if I gotta be honest. Like, <laughs> and the, the set design as well is just, it's so satisfying. It's so good. Yeah, I'm glad people like the set design because I, I definitely spent way too long on that. Um, yeah. <laughs> spent a couple of a couple of the first days of Brawl just building sets, and yeah, going like I didn't I didn't need to make the fireplace set just for an establishing shot, but uh, yeah, I did it anyway. <laughs> well, it's definitely <laughs> worth it. Yeah, like a lot of the stuff, like you were saying, like some things, like. You were talking about like you were planning on doing the ending shot, you know, where he was looking looking through the window after the thief mm -hmm. gone into his house. Like, I definitely see how like you probably like that wasn't necessary, but a lot of the stuff in here, like, like I'm just trying to think of how this how it would have looked if like even just some of these shots weren't in it, you know. Those first few shots are actually very like they just like they kind of put you in this mindset this kind of place like okay i think i know where we're going in this film now you know that's what i like mm -hmm. about it well yeah of course i was trying to economize and like yeah get the setup across in just a couple of shots and then to get into the gags but uh, yeah really it was the sets that kind of like inspired the film because the reason the film kind of started from me looking back at last year's brawl film that i made which had like some pretty good sets but one of the sets that annoyed me looking back at it was there's there's one shot in it which was like one of the last things I made for the film so it's super rushed one shot where I, uh, the main character knocks on the door of the other character and the outside of the house is just like the quickest set ever it's just a white wall with a door in it and like there's nothing else going on it doesn't look like the outside of a house at all it's just a wall with a door so that, that annoyed me and how obviously rushed it looked so I was thinking okay this brawl I don't know what the film's gonna be but all I know is I'm gonna have a much better outside of house set <laughs> so that's what I started with I just started building um, uh, like much fancier looking outside the house and then it, then it was so like large looking that I thought well it's gonna have to be a rich character who owns this house I guess because it's so massive so yeah, uh, that that that's how that that was the the genesis of the idea. It looked super good though, like I really like. And then when he kicks the door off, like, <laughs> and like you were saying, like the setup where he's still in the door, like I can't even now that you said like, is that you just played that in reverse? Yeah. It still looks good, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually, like his dialogue animation there, that is just me like shuffling back and forth between like two or three frames like you know I, I only animated him opening the door and then just like reused the frames to to cover up the rest of the shot essentially so it's just <laughs> the same bit of, bit of animation just played back and forth in various ways well it worked <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. definitely worked but I do feel like explaining that the the arm gag like the way it works is that like the left third of the screen is just like frozen in place essentially you know it's masked over so like yeah like in the unedited footage the big the yellow arm can also be seen you know extending out behind the other side of his head you know it's it's being fed fed in and then fed back um but um there's just at a certain point the entire screen is just frozen so that you don't you don't see everything going on, on the left side you only see what's moving on the right side oh that's, that's that was really clever, clever. And also the uh, the second gag, where like the Robert the thief is running, and then he just runs behind the lamppost. <laughs> like that's really yeah, good. That's the same principle, of course. Yeah, I mean that, in that one it's more apparent. It's it's meant to be apparent, of course. But like, yeah, it's, it, essentially the exact same idea, just 
splitting the screen and and freezing one half in place. That is a really fun gag. That was, uh, yeah. And I like, you know, the way that you've got the lamppost in dead centre is kind of like, mm. it's drawing attention to the idea that it obviously it's, it's clearly masked, but that is kind of, you know, the, the joke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I would be of like the old, like, cartoons, you know? Yeah. Where, the, where they can just hide behind anything they want. Yeah, exactly. I love all that stuff. And that, that was, like, my main inspiration with this was old Looney Tunes and yeah, uh, Tex Avery that, yeah. cartoons. Like, oh, yeah. Especially, like, um, Droopy by Tex Avery. You know, this film, it's essentially like... Or, or early Bugs Bunny stuff by Tex Avery as well. It's about one character trolling another character and... You know, the character who's doing the trolling can just bend the rules, you know, not beholden to physics or, or logic. It's just a- anything to troll the other guy. <laughs> but breaking the rules of physics just as a way of trolling. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was funny, like, he just walks out and he sees a guy who's obviously trolling him, but he, like, asks him if he saw anyone else out there. Like, it's just, it's so, like, that's something I would see in Lo- Looney Tunes, like, they don't. It's just such a cartoony thing to do. The dialogue. I love the use of the newspaper. It's like <laughs> almost like foreshadowing his demise. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that um, newspaper gag. That that was yeah. I really liked that one as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was really funny. I feel like that's also like a classic cartoon thing to have these sight gags with the, the words. Yeah. Uh, I also really like again. It's another. It's, an, it's another example of like a film where, um, you know, you give the um, the illusion of there being a, a world outside of you know what you see. It, it kind of feels like a bigger world. Like um, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. you're you're talking about the you know wanting to have a more impressive uh, outdoor kind of set. Um, you know, showing the inside of the building, and I think you really did achieve that with like. You know, you can see that there's like a door, which, like, you know, from from the back, which I'm assuming is like for like a basement or something, uh, and you can see the stairs, like it, <laughs> and it's like it's just enough there. It's enough there to really feel like it's you know lived in, and there's like something beyond that, you know. Yeah, and it is true that like yeah, even though the outside of the house looks pretty good, like it is just one wall. Like you you barely see any of his garden or anything. But yeah, I do I do think that it it feels like. You don't even notice how it. All you really see outside is just the wall, and then some green stuff out of focus in the background. And of course, you've got like an in-universe reason for like all of the curtain, all the blinds being kind of like closed. Like everyone's afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't <laughs> have to feel. You don't have to see anything in the other window. <laughs> I was aware of that. That is always something that I find really frustrating about uh, building, like you know, buildings. <laughs> yeah, buildings. The, yeah, you got to put yeah. something in the windows. I hate that. <laughs> Of course, I just had a bunch of, like, closed blinds on the, the street set because I just wasn't bothered putting anything in the windows. Yeah. It does actually play, like, it feels like a visual gag in itself because it feels like everyone's scared of... <laughs> you know? I guess, yeah, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, now that you point that out, because <laughs> the world's just getting worse and worse. <laughs> but, um, yeah, should we, should we move on to the top three? Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's what's to go. Congrats on fourth place. That was really impressive. I love your film. Thank you. Yeah, that was. I I I, uh, I really enjoyed that one. I was glad to see it uh, place high. Um, but yeah, so we move on to Lucia, uh, which is by Jared Van Beaver, uh, Louis Townley, John McCurlin, uh, Levi Darth Levy Johnson, and James. Kaywood. Um, I don't know if I've, I've probably butchered some of those names, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was uh, a lot of people from Break Film Day, and uh, yeah, it was a really impressive film that really came together, like, peacefully, I thought. Yeah, this film, oh man, like, the lighting, and uh, I'm assuming like, all those different people filmed different things, and like, kind of brought their yeah. own style to this film. And usually, like, I've done some films where it's like, two of us animate different parts and like when we did that film it was like you can definitely tell who filmed what but this one really feels like everything it stays consistent throughout with like good lighting good animation you know and it's just like those like mini scale shots of them walking you know oh those are really good shots i love those shots and it just it yeah this stay it's a very consistent film 
I like the fact, like, it's a great story. Yeah, I love this film. Yeah, and, and again, it's, like, quite long. I mean, I know there's a lot of people making it, but, yeah, quite long for a brawl entry. Mm -hmm. And if, especially for the quality of the kind of film it is, like, five minutes and 20 seconds, that's, a, that's, that's pretty long for how well it is. Pretty well done. Yeah, and to have, like, multiple more action-oriented sequences with moving camera and everything. All that stuff I'd I'd be desperately trying to avoid for Brawl. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. The part when he kills the troll is awesome. Like, he dives under his legs and then stabs him in the eyeball. The fight scenes are really, really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I also really love the close-up shots of... Uh... You know, that kind of POV from the from the chest when he's kind of like opening and you know, opening and trying to you know trying to find the you know, the thing, and it's like that's that's a sort of cool shot where they got like, the hand is like you know opening the chest. Yeah, so so well done. Like I said, the moving shots, like you can definitely tell the first one. They're like they they have more people and like more energetic, and then like the next moving shot, they're like less people, slower. And you can like also see his hair is growing throughout. Like the attention to detail is really like well thought of. Like can definitely tell they uh, talked about this these sort of details a lot. I do really like as well. They say uh, those micro scale sets uh, with the you know the, the characters moving around. That um, as it as the film progresses, there's like less and less of them. It's like you know that like his army is getting smaller and smaller as they continue. Searching for this, for the chest, you know, it's a nice little detail. Yeah, just and then set, like I said, the set design is just super well, super well built, and consistent throughout the whole film. It's such a well crafted film. Yeah, you can definitely yeah. tell there's a talking going on. Like they, they were all on the same page about a lot of things, and like you can definitely tell they were talking. They were. Trying to work out all these details together. The story is really real well written, I would say. And I love the progression of the as a the character has a real arc. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The last action scene, like with the ground is on fire and it's like nighttime, but the the lighting just looks so crazy there with the like super bright uh, light source and the long shadows, like unlike what you usually see in brick films, I think. It like really really stands out yeah that was that was probably my favorite like fight scene and, and like the set like the temple or whatever it was like the tower i mean i think that's a ninjago set but like it works so well <laughs> like <laughs> usually i have a thing about using like real lego sets um yeah. in bird films like that's something i try not to do too much i try to build it but like i agree yeah it's this set is like like, I would have used it instead. Like, this is just such a well-made set, and it works so well within the story. Like, the huge doors, it looks super good. I really was impressed with not just Jay Silver, as usual, <laughs> but also <laughs> Blandir's uh, dramatic voice performance in this. You know, like, usually Blandir is really, really good with the comedic voice performances. But, like, th this more serious role, like, he sounded really legit here. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really yeah really good. Um, having having both of the voice acts you know, together in a film is uh, yeah. really good. <laughs> but um, actually, you mentioned the um, the Ninjago set with the with the doors. It it, it strikes me as kind of funny because like it's unusual. Like one of the things you always usually find with like if you're using like sets in a in a brick film is that. They seem too small. The scale was too small, and mm, yeah. the 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 shot of him opening the doors like that is like perfect for the what he was wanting to do. Um, a bit unusual for a Lego set. <laughs> yeah, it works super well. Like I think if there was like, but I think the best Lego sets to use in brick films are yeah those kind of building structure kind of Lego sets because they like they work really well, especially like. Like within this medieval story, you know, the Ninjago Castle, or I don't even know what you'd call it. Like the that structure just works really well, especially with the nighttime scene and like like you said, Penta, like the long shadows and the lighting. It just works super well in that setting. Yeah, that scene just stands out to me. Just 
I love that it's like confident enough to just use the one really strong light source primarily. Uh, but yeah, and some to go back to something we were touched on briefly is that yeah, it's nice that uh, there's been a Brick Film Day co-production entry for I think seven brawls in a row, and and they've been top ten like six in a row, and this is the second time they've been third in the in the within the top three. So I just love to love to see people you know who who keep showing up. That's quite that's quite a um, yeah, quite a stacked um, weight there of like successful. Ent- mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, entries with the uh, break from day sort of came together. Yeah, yeah. Should we, should we head over to number two? Ah, yes. Picked clean by Alan Williams, a former lens. Former lens. And uh, yeah, this is um, yeah once again uh, another um, you know regular with the with the yeah, high ranking role and and the side entries. Um, For good reason, of course. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, this one is um, this really kind of um, like like really beautifully kind of like I don't know like told <laughs> it's like kind of very kind of like it's kind of like haunting kind of um, vibe to it um, and it's just like a really interesting film uh, I'd, I'd be lying if I if I said that I I understood like a hundred percent of what was going on but I definitely appreciate the kind of the vibe and the, the kind of just like pacing and, and tonal structure of it is it's really interesting yeah. i also loved the uh music choice was i i loved the music in this i think it was definitely an inspirer for this film it has a really haunting yet beautiful uh vibe to it as well and it really complements the film yeah this is definitely one of my favorite entries uh, just yeah really well crafted overall like it just really draws you in yeah that uh shot where uh, she's like playing the guitar and then she sees the ghost and she like she's on her porch and it shows the whole house and she runs inside that shot just like stands out to me really well like the lighting and that shot is just super good formal lens they're super good at lighting and like their sets are there's something about their videos that just like makes me happy <laughs> it's like the set design or lighting it's really well done yeah i really couldn't believe this entry when when it came up in the playlist, I was like marveling at it because it just it felt like every shot was just so carefully just laid out, like the you know the lens choice and the the distance, the, the distance of the camera from the set, and yeah, the lighting. It all felt like like if I was to make these shots, it would take me forever. You know, I'd be I'd be all day setting up each individual shot. Like I couldn't do it for brawl. Uh, so I was just blown away. Hmm. I really love the visual of like the flowers like popping around, and um, I, I really like a lot of like some of the elements of like you know some things that happen to the ghosts. Like I really love that that part where she kind of transforms that leg, that sort of like bone, into um, like a flower, and then like a, a butterfly kind of like flies off. Like it's and it's so kind of fluid, and like it it, it kind of just works so well. The way that like he's like replaced the the had like replacement animation, um, yeah, it just it just yeah, it it works so well. <laughs> yeah, and the, like the tears, like the crying. I'm assuming they're tears, <laughs> but like they, it also looks really well. Like you, like because they're giant, they're like studs. They're like as big as their face, but like mm-hmm. it works. It like it, I don't know. It adds to the kind of like practical fully lego life of this group i guess there's almost something kind of um scary about the idea of like these like i don't know giant tears somehow like it it feels kind of otherworldly like ghostly (laughs) yeah i love the uh story of it i think there's definitely a lot of thought put to it like the way i see it like she has like skeletons in the closet and like past like uh um, or whatever that she's trying to like battle out and she's like wrestling with these really big like internal dilemmas i guess and it's really cool to see like the characters transition to like becoming and like the it comp- like it parallels the forest as well like you know she's kind of depressed or whatever and as she's going through like these moments in her life she kind of along with the forest becomes uh alive again. whole again mhm yeah, it's kind of like the, the yeah. I like that interpretation. It's kind of like the 
um, the the forest is kind of like a visual interpretation of like her personal internal struggles and the 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 forest healing is like her healing yeah yeah i love that about this film yeah definitely an entry that benefits from multiple watches yeah yeah that's definitely something i would have like not really i uh, come across like in on first watch so um yes it definitely it's kind of cool how like many shadows are in this uh film like that can get kind of um problematic like i know i noticed when i have like these darker sets I usually get a lot of flicker and these there's no flicker whatsoever in this film and those just the lighting is really impressive and it looks yeah. like moonlight yeah yeah it, it really um the lighting is so good in this film it, it feels like so kind of natural and yeah it, it, i mean it kind of avoids that kind of harsh um lighting you often get in brick films actually mm-hmm. um yeah, it's uh Of course it's really yeah, working with Lego's super annoying because of how reflective it is, but yeah, you don't you don't see like big bright reflections on the, the figs, yeah. Um do we uh, I guess we could I guess move on to the first place one and and, and I I guess uh I'll I'll leave it to you guys to introduce this next one. <laughs> and we talked about it a little bit, but uh <laughs> <laughs> A fair bit. So first place is Live Rich, Die Richer by both of us, co-productions, <laughs> Corbonzo Films. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this is our film. Uh, pretty fun to make. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say. Uh, yeah, we talked about it quite a bit at the start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, goodbye, yeah. everybody. No, I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm thinking to myself, uh, I, yeah, I've said th- the, the things that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I will say that, like, um, I, I've said this before, but how impressive, like, the especially the top five were and how close it was, I think, um, no, actually, I'll say, I'll say more like, like top ten, you know, like, uh, all these entries were so was so kind of like um impressive and could so easily have ranked uh, you know towards the you know top 3 um i think uh it could have gone so many different directions and i'm so glad it, it ended up going the direction it did uh, with um mm-hmm. this placing in first i i really um just feel like it, it did some stuff like some things uh just so kind of like in a unique way yeah it just came out as a as a a really a really solid film um, yeah from... and i have to say like i was really happy to see a bunch of comments from other people who recognized that it was something special because like i was slightly worried that um it, it could end up being a i don't want to say a controversial winner but i was slightly worried that people might be like oh you know something else should have won but yeah no there was loads of comments of people like oh wow i'm really glad this won or like oh i, I watched it because it won and wow this was great <laughs> I, I i yeah i think other people also f- felt like oh yeah you know this is this is something special yeah that's what that's definitely what we were trying to go for it's just something like <laughs> different i guess like i don't know because i i feel like you don't see a lot of uh films that are like bending the rules that much except for like i guess nowadays like i'm seeing a lot of that through the bridge to motion community it is really refreshing but like i really kind of want to wanted to try to be able to inspire other people to maybe try making like mm. experimenting with this different like atmosphere like yeah real life you know live action shots or even filming outside like that kind of thing i you know? like to hear that and yeah like, i do love that there's still people around who yeah make films like this and it's like sometimes i worry that like as time goes on are are people who arrive to brick filming as newcomers is all they're going to see just going to be like youtube shorts and like just meme videos and is that what they're going to think brick filming is or is supposed to be but so i I like to think that like by us doing the contests on bricks emotion like you know if we're celebrating like proper films as the winners of our contests i'd like to think that it's you know people might think oh that's that's the kind of stuff that's getting celebrated um 
there maybe there is there's more to this than you know grimace shake in lego <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i love that there's people like you around and uh, making films like this and of course all the other people around making all the other brawl entries yeah i mean i think it means a lot to not only see the the number of entries coming into these things like how relevant um like brawl and thack you know still is and, and how much people you know appreciate and how people take part but also yeah what what is being kind of um recognized in that and and um yeah this is just the results of that you know mm-hmm. it, it, like the films that people make uh, and of course and at the end of the like, day like i know that you know this the kind of stuff i'm talking about it's never going to have a lot of views but like i don't know like scrolling through the comments section it just it it's just feels really special to me i, I like that this stuff uh, you know I, I hope it will continue to exist yeah yeah me too it shows like a real community and i'm yeah super like grateful that i get to be a, like a part of it because i had no idea about like uh like bricks and minifigs and like these contests and stuff and then when i moved and met uh tell that's when i like you know learned about all this stuff and it's super cool because it's like a real this is a real community like you know you got people from all over making films and you get people that you have seen before and you get new people and it's just really really cool to see Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I like. I I love to see the com- the bricks and motion community just grow in different ways. Like like all whether that's like everyone gets to talk about a certain film that everyone liked, or if it's like someone's like people are experimenting with different things. You know, it's fun to go through like the Discord chat and just see what's going on. You know, but yeah. I'm grateful to be part of this community as well. Yeah, and it, it did come up in the Discord recently. Like, other people were saying some of the stuff that I was just saying there about, like, you know, oh, it, are people still going to be making, you know, kind of story based Rick films? And it, it's, we were saying it's really weird that, like, we, we think or worry about the same things, but then at the same time, yeah, like, we literally just did the biggest ever brawl, and all of the entries are, like, you know, formatted as short films <laughs> yeah. so it's it's really weird that numbers wise it looks like there's more than ever of you know the type of thing that we like to promote um but then but also we kind of feel this other weird thing of like oh no <laughs> we have to make sure that it continues to exist <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i i haven't been in the community for super long so like i i don't i can't I can't really see how much it's grown since like like the first brawl, you know, like I don't know how many people entered in that, but <laughs> to me it probably wasn't hundred and fifty three people. It was eleven. Dang. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's crazy. Fifteen brawls later, like a hundred and fifty people. Like that's insane. That's that's growth in the community. That's so nice to see. And of course I'm I'm always super proud that when that the, there's still people from that first brawl who still enter, and this year there was actually three out of eleven of them, which is more than usual. Shout out to Robocca, of course, who made a great entry. I was hoping Robocca would place, but you know, <laughs> it's always up in the air whether or not Robocca will place. <laughs> yeah, brawl is crazy. I love brawl. It's just cool that I can inspire a bunch of people like make films. Yeah, like that's definitely like definitely for me. Like, I probably wouldn't have a youtube channel if it wasn't for like the pre film community as a whole like it's really cool to see that kind of stuff like the amount of films that inspired us and now we're taking that inspiration and turning that into something and that could be inspiring other people and like it just it's like it goes full circle you know mm-hmm. cool to see mm. yeah, yeah that's that's uh um that's really good i mean like yeah i, I think that's um I definitely kind of connect to that idea that, um, yeah, the community is really what makes all this stuff worth it. Um, and even, even if like you're not getting the views that you would if you were doing, I don't know, skibbity toilets in Lego <laughs> or whatever, like it doesn't matter. Like, cause ultimately what, what, what matters is that, that core community, um, of people inspiring, inspiring each other in, in, you know, creative ways and, and, um, that's ultimately what leads people to keep doing this stuff for 
you know, multiple years. Um, and yeah, I think that, um, I always feel like it seems like trying to navigate the direction that things are going in with within brick filming is always a bit hard to like, to know, but like, if, if there's anything to kind of come out of this, like, you know, like brawl and the recent Thax and all that, like, it's that, yeah, that core community is, is bigger than ever and they're making amazing films. So, yeah. I agree. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of a good, probably quite a good way to, I think to wrap so, up. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've just, I've started watching Roboka's entry again. I'm just mesmerized by it over here. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, th- thank you so much, guys, for uh, for joining us. And, uh, yeah, congratulations. Actually, one more thing before we leave. Um, I want to actually ask, um, did you, did you uh, choose the duck? Yeah. Did we? No, I don't know. Uh, we, we didn't choose the duck. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, yeah. I Actually, I, I had forgotten about that, but I was going to ask that as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I think the castle is also a really cool Lego set. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I just... The duck is also really cool. I think, I think the fact that it was, like... Was it uh, signed by the designer of the Lego set, mm-hmm. wasn't it? That's, yeah. that's insane, but I was like, <laughs> there's a castle. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> they're, both, they're both really cool, and it was hard for us to decide, but, you know, uh, we also, we were also, you know, looking out for second and third, you know, we were, we thought we'd be nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah to be honest, that, that castle set, I mean, it would, I would, you know, if I was in your position, I don't know what I would have chosen, to be honest. Yeah, the, the, the castle looked amazing as well, so, yeah, sounds like a Sounds like a sounds like a really good pick, um, but yeah, um, yeah. Once again, thank you, thank you so much uh, mm-hmm. for joining us, and uh, yeah, congratulations uh, for Ball. I look forward to seeing uh, all the amazing stuff you guys uh, yeah continue to do in yeah. the future. I look forward to whatever's next as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you we for appreciate it. Inviting us up, up on here. This is, honestly, I've been wanting to be on this podcast for so long. <laughs> it's been a dream of mine since <laughs> I heard the first episode. So. <laughs> It's pretty pretty cool to be on this. That's oh, really nice to hear. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for letting us be on here and uh, talk with you guys. It was a, it was a pleasure. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> yeah, same. Bye. Yeah. Um, All right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>